Welcome in, welcome in. Carpet for the Horse presents From the Horse's Mouth tonight, Friday. Brittany Griner's home. The Merchant of Death is free. And Dion is gone. So let's talk about it. Here we go, here we go. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome in, Walker. How you feeling? People got a lot to say nowadays. What's going on? The girl Brittany home. We was just talking about uh Brittany, our last recording. You know, we was uh talking about uh being smart with uh you know marijuana, knowing the laws, knowing what's up against you out there. And we had said, you know, say a special prayer for uh the girl Brittany, here she goes, she home. And Gav, I think you made a prediction. You said that Brittany was gonna be home before Christmas. And here we go. The it, the prophecy has been fulfilled, baby. And here we are. And the merchant oh, and, oh and, and you said and you said it was gonna be for the merchant of death. And people in the uproar. Let's we're gonna dig into who this merchant of death character is. And we're gonna get into That's it. Funny. Like you said, I'm going to see if I can dig that up. We were doing the stream back during the summertime, right? When she first got sentenced to yep. the nine years, right? She got nine years and you know, and I was telling people, relax, you know, they had to give that stiff penalty because it's all, all a move on the chessboard, right? And I said, mark my words. I said, she will be home before Christmas. I said this four or five months ago. And mm. people like, no, nah, it's over. I said, Trust me, relax. Here we are. I'm not surprised. I say that to say I'm not surprised. But me either. It's 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 a political move. You know, I, that's that's how I saw it, and it is what it is. But I would definitely say, you know, definitely still keep her in your prayers, uh, regardless of you know the celebrity and it being a political move. Yada yada yada. That was you know that was a woman you know over uh, in prison abroad. You know, over in the gulag, and uh, regardless of whether, yeah, regardless of whether or not she, you know, did do any labor, the thought of having to do it for the next nine years and things like that, that had to be definitely traumatizing. So, we definitely want to keep her in our prayers as far as that. So, there you go. That would be our, we'll touch on that. That'll be our main topic. Like you said, yep. Coach Prime, right? He leaves. People are in an uproar. So we'll start there first tonight, you know, and we'll start bringing up our guests. We got some people in the back. What's going on? I tell you what, my we don't need no more What's guests. Up? Baby. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, fellas? Yeah, What's up, up, brother? <laughs> Not much, man. I've been trying to bro? catch these things, but y'all, 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 two hours, three hours ahead sometimes, man. <laughs> I know, man. I know. So I'd be like, man, every time I'd be like, man, be, cause some of this stuff I'd be like, we be needing Mike here, man. You need your perspective. I take, I take my so, sunglasses off for Mike. There you go. There we go. Get real perspective, get perspective up in here. Man. Make sure when y'all come up here tonight, make sure your pants is pulled up, all that. Yeah. Watch Damn, that right. one, baby. Real top, real top. You got, I'm going to turn my hat around here in a minute. Give me a minute. I'll turn it <laughs> Might take it off. Might just take it off. Might take it off. But um, like I said, Coach Prime leaves, right? And everybody's up in arms. Everybody's saying he should have stayed. He made promises, right? And here we are. So... Just early on, what's your opening take? What you've been thinking about it, Mike? You've been seeing like the post people are making one way or the other, whether they agree or disagree with it. And then, you know, what's your sort of early uh, take? Yeah, on? I mean, yeah, I mean, initially you can look at it twofold, right? Because you, you got to understand the, where he was at, at at a historical black college, right? That has history and that, that but history that's rooted in the South and in terms of, uh, the heritage and the homage of black people, right? But Dion never grew up or went to a school there. Most of those SWAT coaches are went to those SWAT schools, went to HBCU. So it's a, it's a different mentality in terms of what it means to coach there and what it means to mentor those kids 
and vice versa. Uh, but on the flip side, of that you look on the um, what's what's attractive and what's popular, right? You you can look at it on the surface level, say you know Dion is a sellout because he went to a school that's paying him more, where he got more eyes at Big Five conference. And that's what Dion, if you just look at the history of Dion, he always been about his money, right? It's his brand, right? So in terms of a selfish aspect, it helps his brand, right? It helps, you know, his pockets, it helps his children, it helps, you know, his personal endeavor. Um, so in terms of twofold, I mean, I can see the perspective of some people calling him a sellout, which I kind of, I'm kind of like, eh, when it comes to that word sellout, right? I mean, that was just a, if you if you was a businessman, you're making a business decision. That's it. <laughs> you know what yes. I'm saying? If you and, and in college football, it's business, right? Mm -hmm. Coaches, coaches leave and move all the time, right? But uh you know, it just seems like we seem to castrate our own people when it comes to uh you know uh mentoring, protecting, and uh you know, something that's supposed to have been about all yeah. inclusive black right and when somebody yeah. leave and when somebody leave and and it, you know promise that i don't think his personal promise left right because he still mm -hmm. is helping young kids coach young black kids and helping them get into positions to get nil deals and get scholarships so his his personal agenda hasn't left he just left the go. school so i could i could see it both ways in terms of how people can can be mad but i'm like man as a as on surface, as a man making a business decision for his family, you gotta make a business decision for your family. Because anybody else, all the folks who say he's a sellout, if they got offered thirty million dollars five years, they gone. Yeah, you know what I'm saying they leave. And I'm I'm also hearing conflicting reports in terms of like the the money. So and and so the money that Dion was the thing that well, let's focus on his contributions. So the contributions that Dion was doing was you know he gave half his salary back to the school. Um, he went back to back SWAC championships. Um, you know, he brought in uh, former NFL coaches to help attract attention and likeness towards the school. Right. Not only that, brand new locker room, brand new uniforms, helping build facilities, you know, giving money from his own personal pockets back to the school. And I'm reading conflicting reports that the money that they that Jackson State was that was owing that still owed Dion. He never saw a dime of it because the money was being handled uh, disproportionately with the AD and the commissions of the league. So I was like, well, if those reports are true, I'm definitely bouncing. Like, you see, out of there. And <laughs> there, definitely out of there. That's nuts. And it was a couple of videos that show him in uh, press conferences where he was expressing, you know, having his uh, coaches locker burglarized, you know, yeah, during yeah. games. And like you said, you get treated this bad. You know, people got to, you know, step outside themselves and look at it from this man's point of view. He catching hell. And like you said, he, he has accomplished so much just by himself. He, he, they say, oh, he did it for the money. No, he did it for his family. That is a family man. Don't take away what he has done. And I'm not going to get into it, but we got to start looking for a savior in one individual. Like you're looking for Mr. Deion Sanders to go and save the whole you know, um, historically black college deal whenever Congress just cut funding to HBCUs by like 90 percent. Yeah. And also it, uh, half of the HBCUs won't survive the next decade because of funding. So within the next 10 years, we won't see those HBCUs. I mean, not saying Dion, to your point, Willie, not saying Dion is a savior. Now, he could for those who thought he could have been what should have been more. He could have been a catalyst just like. Harriet Tubman was the catalyst for the railroad. There you, you know, go. Like, Who's to say he wasn't? You know, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Who to say he wasn't of the mark he left there? Um, mm -hmm. So I wouldn't go as far as to say he's a sellout. Now, the sellouts, I would say, in terms of the black people speaking in defense of Jerry Jones, and that man having even defended himself about that picture. It's like, yo, Stephen A and all y'all and Mike Irvin, don't, no black man should be coming in defense of a white man about a uh, a racist photo like that, you but you should have been like, nah, I'm I'm waiting to hear what Jerry Jones got to say about that. I'm not no. gonna speak on the 80 year old defending the 80 year old man in terms of oh that happened back then. Like, what the hell? Like that that's what I call Stella. Like, why y'all defending this white man? He ain't opened up his mouth yet, man. It's like that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. So there well, you here go. we are, real quick. 
So I'll say the very people that will criticize Dion, right? He's left HBCUs. Like we said, he can't bring it back on his own. People do not support HBCU. They say they won't. Like I said, we don't support stuff. No, we won't show up to the games and pay fucking $15 for a beer, $10 for a hot dog. Yeah. That ain't how we move. Yeah. We don't, the college students, black college students don't plan their whole weekends around a football game. Y'all don't yeah. do that. The white students do that. That's why them schools are funded. They put the money back into the schools because they support right. it. Right. And right. so the very people that's criticizing Dion for leaving, right? They're saying, oh, you're supposed to stay there and build it up. In the next breath, they talking about Alabama, Georgia. Oh, let's go. Let's go, Bulldogs. Mm -hmm. Y'all yeah. don't want y'all don't even consume the product. So y'all hypocrites. Uh, you know? big time hypocrites, man. You got you got you got HBCU, you got a HBCU in Mississippi and Alabama. A lot of those SEC schools got competing HBCUs there, but you you have a bigger student black in those schools supporting those programs than you have in your own backyard. So uh, if you if you if for the folks who want to be an advocate of change, you got to one look within and support the change that you advocate for, right? But don't criticize a man who's actually doing more than the person who's just talking shit behind the camera and stuff. Come so, on, that's, yeah. In terms of what Dion is doing, I mean, you can't fault the man from one taking half of his own personal salary, putting back into the school, you know, pouring back into the kids. I mean, a lot of people. It's using money as terms of a contribution, but most people can't can't even give their time to get back to two kids. And time was the most important things. I mean, time is is literally how you spell love because when you invest and sacrifice time for something that's not of any interest to you, right? But for the betterment because you see the potential in in, in the youth or whatever that ideal is, that's how you really know somebody is committed to that. But yeah. um Folks who's, who's saying that sellout or thinking that's a bad move is just like, well, what have you done then? If you're so supportive of it, like, what have you done? And you know what? That is my raging overall argument. And that's that the people that got the most to say most likely ain't worth a damn. Because here it is. It's, it's, it's black folks, people the same color as him that's crucifying him. Yeah. And and come on, man, we, we know the uh, condition that our culture is in and we got to stop looking for saviors in, in any in any entertainer, period. Dick Gregory said it best. And I think uh, and also um, uh, uh, what's his name? Not Dr. Humar, but um, what's the brother we listen to with the in black academia? Uh, Dr. Boyce. Dr. Boyce said that, you know, uh, entertainers are not our leaders. No. Entertainers, they they are in no position to be our leaders. That's no. not how it works. And we got to stop looking at, at any entertainer, whether it's sports, movies, <laughs> rap. They are in no position to be a leader. They are bound by contracts. They got a job to do. That's just what it is. So here, I agree. So here we are. You mentioned the name there, right? You brought up this fella here. So he's the latest <laughs> man to go after. Um, Deion Sanders, Mr. Black and so, Black himself. You see what I'm saying, Mr. C Moss Gold himself, baby. Uh, <laughs> so he, he went on the Breakfast Club and he got some some harsh things. This is just a snippet of it. I guess we'll watch this and sort of break this down a little bit and see what we think, whether you agree or disagree with what he's saying. The reason I'm so personally disappointed in Dion is I thought he was there for a movement, not for money. Meaning, Dion Sanders, the coach of Jackson State, I foresaw a situation where Dion would hire other coaches, other retired black NFL greats, to coach other HBCUs. Now, real quick, two things is true. He actually did. You got Eddie George who's coaching, right? You got yeah. um um what's, what's my man name from the Bengals? Um, he got back in the coaching, right? Yeah, he got Ch uh, 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 Jackson, the Hugh Jackson. Hugh Jackson, he got Hugh Jackson back yeah. coaching. Uh, Eddie George. So he's get. Why can't somebody like a Terrell Owens and these other guys sort of grab the torch and keep doing with Dion? I don't think Dion is the guy by himself. I think everybody has to contribute. Why can't Jerry Rice go back? Right? Why can't Shandy Sharp go back. 
right? Why can't these guys go back and give back? You know what I mean? Why we want to put this all on him? Who he went to Florida State. He went to a Division One college. He is not a graduate of a HBCU. Yeah. So he yeah. said Dion did. Dion did go and put um, uh, assistance in place. Jackson State had one of the best staff. They had all former NFL players coaching them kids. They had the best facilities. You know, you know about yeah. this, Mike. You can speak on this. And yeah. and so he, they had the best of the best. They had Snoop Dogg in the locker room. They got to meet celebrities. He was there for three years. He changed the culture. Dion did not sign the contract to say, I'm going to be here for 10 years, 20 years, till I die. He simply said he was coming to change. Everything he said he was going to do, he did. Y'all just, <laughs> yeah. It just ain't to y'all satisfaction. There and you when go. it ain't to y'all satisfaction, here comes the pushback. But what's your that, take on that, Mike, as far as him, him saying that? And I would say Dion did change the culture for Jackson State. It's hard to change the culture for the whole HBCUs. No, nah, he, he, I, I would agree with that statement. He did change the culture of, of the HBCU. I mean, this, I mean, we're being frank here. A lot of people didn't know who or what Jackson State was until Dion got there I did. And, and gave the and gave the attention and gave the national spotlight. I mean, he got he brought college game day there, man. Like, come on, man, and put him on the national spotlight, dude. Seriously. So, in terms of changing the culture, he definitely changed the culture because when it term when it comes to HBCUs, the number one thing when it comes to why nobody support is lack of contribution and the number of people who knows about them, right? So yeah. by having by waking people up, especially white folks, because it's kind of like it's surprising when white folks kind of like, oh, I never knew about the. Also, the uh, the uh, the Tulsa, uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma bombings. I like you never heard about Black Wall Street. You just now heard about that 2022. You know what I'm saying? So, but the fact that I mean, thanks to the admin of the internet and stuff and things, and now and, and things leak out and get out right now, you got more people with, with more eyes on it. You don't understand where the person's passion or contribution might be or where their heart laying at. So, in terms of changing the culture, to your point, De- Dion definitely changed that for sure. And I'm sitting here like, well. To your point, Gavin, yes, Dion didn't graduate from HBU. He went to Florida State, and then he immersed himself in that culture to bring about change. But uh, someone who is famous and a Hall of Famer and a legend who got a gold jacket, who went to HBCU, fucking Jerry Rice, and nobody say shit. <laughs> he, ain't, he, ain't gave, he ain't gave shit back to HBCU, dog. He ain't no coach, no mentorship, no wide receiver academies, no nothing. You know what I'm saying? So, there you go. That's the goat. That's the goat. He's the goat. There you go. And Dr. Umar said, he said, you know, what I saw Dion doing when he was there, like you said, Gav, people putting their own uh, spin on what they think he should be doing, what they expect him to be doing there. And that ain't how this works. Go donate your time and resources. Then you can have something to say. But Dr. Umar, he, just starting off, he said, what I saw him doing there, I believe that's what he said. What I saw him doing there is bringing more coaches or black coaches back to coach, and that's what you saw. Stop. And that, stop and that's that. a hard. That's a hard. That, that, that you you asking too much of a man to try to to try to galvanize other men to partake in something which their heart is not really desired to do. Like there Leon's you know. heart was desired to do so, right? But if Jerry Rice, who graduated from the HBCU, or Shannon Sharp, who graduated from the HBCU, or Michael Strahan, who graduated from the HBCU, right? If they heart's not into something they were immersed in, it's hard for you to galvanize the truth to, 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 um, to establish like a, a catalyst, to establish a culture, if that's what the intentions were, right? To mm-hmm. like, hey, I'm going to focus on HBCUs. It's all about HBCUs. I'm trying to get the funding here. I'm going to get the word. I'm going to bring national spotlight here. And keep the money in our institutions for us so we can you know establish on uh building upon that foundation that was built a long time ago right so but to ask that man to like you know to 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 start a movement that one that's that wasn't dion's purpose man he wasn't there to start a movement he he said he promised to continue to help and mentor young black kids and he could do that right at other institutions as well so you know him going to colorado is a business move but you got to understand where dr umar are coming from i'm not saying he's wrong dr umar is a pan-africanist he always gonna be black for black people yeah. from black people always 
right? Yeah. So his his take on it is not surprising. It's just Dr. Umar's take on it because that's yeah. who he is as an individual. He's always going to be All right. so, so, black So first. real quick, Mike, not, not to cut you off. So answer this, though. You say, I, I told you this earlier, and Dr. Umar is black first, but this is the very man who's looking to start his own school. He's not a professor at an HBCU. You see what I'm saying? So it's kind of hypocritical for him to be coming at Dion. Seriously. It's like, man. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the Gavi Academy is more focused on that, on the on the white establishment curriculum in terms of learning about, in terms of getting degrees in which they have no return of, of investment. Right. So instead of his buying into something, because whether you're at HBCU, Colorado, wherever it is, you know, today's degree holds no weight. <laughs> you yeah. don't get your return on investments anymore. Right. So whether you're at an HBCU or Colorado or Florida State, it, college school, co those those degrees hold no weight. What, what Garvey Academy is, is about, you know, uh, I think Umar was saying about learn, teaching kids financial literacy. How to grow a garden, you know, understand the intersexual dynamics when it comes to black men, black, uh, black women. And, and so we can keep uh, uh, rebuild our mental state in terms of how we see uh, about relationships, because if you just look at okay. the data, the statistics, we are the worst of the worst. Right. And we're our own problem. Right. Yeah. Uh, also, in terms of self-defense, like shit that's ap actually applicable. Right. So, gotcha. in terms of so stuff, what do you say you about know, they, they, they say that's all a scam, though. So here we are. It's been 10 years. It's been 10 years. And now they talk speaking of scam. Like I used to rock with Umar Har, but at some point we all got to start producing results as men. Right. You know so I mean? so yeah, he already produced the results. So if you if you if you look at the updates on it, so Umar uh the, so the school so the school was sold three years ago. Right. I mean, by, by okay. three years ago, but it had it had you okay. still had HVAC contracting. Right. You still had licenses you had to get. So Umar. Right. Went to only black people to try to build a black people school. Took three years until now to this date where he had to hire outside contractors who was white, who actually got the licenses for the building. Right. And who and, and got the permits, got the HVAC in. So the school is. Uh, the latest update, the school is up. He's just waiting for the licensing from the state, and then they're good, they're good rocking. But the fact, and that's another example that, like, the fact that, like, a lot of people criticize Umar about his school, but I'm like, man, he's name me one other celebrity or black millionaire, billionaire who established an institution, not that's talking true. about no movement or no charter school, an institution. You gotta understand institutions, uh, banks, hospitals, grocery stores. You know what I mean? Shit that's going to build a foundation which you can keep the money circulating back in the community. Like, he's starting that. There's no that's black true. there's no some black celebrity anywhere anywhere doing that's that true. shit like that. So, and as much as he's critical about Umar, I mean, the dude I think when he said he's going to set up the dude in 2014, he, it's, it's coming to fruition. You know what I'm saying? I agree. So, I hope it do. I'm just trying to figure out why more of us ain't getting behind it. Like, I feel like it should have been happening. You know what I, I mean? I agree. I, I definitely mm -hmm. agree with you on that. He, he definitely should have been had that, but... Oh, for okay. sure. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. this is... They yeah. turn to turn, they're trying to turn him into a joke, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Like, yeah. I wish he would. Get, I, I wish nothing but the school to get done, for sure. But, you know what I mean? We definitely got to help somebody. We'd we be our own worst problem. Issues. We'd be our own worst problem. If Dr. Umar was Asian, if he was Asian, he said that, school would have been done. If he was yeah. fucking Filipino and said that, school would have been done. If he was white and he said that, school would have been done. You know what I mean? When it comes to us, ah, oh, man, I'm, yeah, I don't know. It's like, come on, G. Like, come on, man. So, I mean, we're our own worst problem, and I'll say 90% of it is just psychological. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yes, there you go. I agree. So, Umar, yeah, man, he is... Uh... He's a whole deal. I brought Quiddy. Like you said, I'm going to listen more because I'm always open for a different perspective. I want to see where he's coming from. And let's get back into him. See what he's saying here. In doing so, you attract our top tier high school athletes to come to Maybe. HBCU. Maybe. Stay with me. Eddie Jones, that's in the Stay with State. me. Stay with me. Football and back. You know like I know, if you got top tier NFL greats coaching HBCUs, the athletes are coming Maybe. just like they was coming for Dion. He is, is that necessarily true? He was there for three years. People like, here's my deal. My only problem is people act like he was there for fucking three, four, five, six months. And he had a losing season, and he said, "To hell with this." 
No, he was there for four years and built up a program. Why can't somebody else sustain what he has built? You know, and then other people come aboard. Why is it? But people are like, it's too late for a Jerry Rice and these guys to come and donate their time and start coaching. Maybe he started something that can now carry on. I think people place it too much on him. Why can't these other guys now sort of come use HBCU as a stepping stone like he, he did? Why can't this be the new pipeline for young black coaches, the young black good coaches, right? Why just like Dion? Because one thing he didn't want to do, he always wanted to be a college coach and he wants to be an NFL coach. I think Dion's gonna coach the Dallas Cowboys one day. I'm you know, we could come back and look at this recording one day. And, <laughs> and here we are. So why can't any coach, anybody who is aspiring like Dion say, I don't really want to be an assistant, right? But I will go and be a head coach HBCU and I'm gonna go this route. And why can't that sort of be a pipeline almost like a G League or some shit for young black coaches to come through to make their way up to D1? With, I, I, along with the athletes. And it, like he yeah, said, I would I would say that's 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 more the responsibility shoulders of uh Jackson State and the A D because Dion didn't reach out to Jackson State. Jackson State athletic director reached out to Dion because they saw his 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 prime camp that he was doing down there in Florida and throughout the South. Uh, uh, galvanizing these kids, right? So when Jackson State reached out to him, it was an opportunity for Dion to now have a platform to we can reach a much broader audience, right? Especially helping those young black kids. So in terms of creating that pipeline, now that Dion is gone, they seen what a, a high profile athlete can do. Hey, reach out to Jerry, reach out to Shannon, reach out to Michael Strahan. You know what I'm saying? They also in that same atmosphere, but again. If a man doesn't have it in his heart, man, he's not going to be committed to it. It's a different ball game when you're in the HBCU, man. It's not like a Power Five or uh, a FBS conference, man. The HBCU is you have to be about culture, not only about the kids, but it be about culture first. And if it's ain't in your heart, it ain't in your heart. You know what I'm saying? Just trying to get Michael Strahan, the head coach of HBCU, when he's dating white women, yeah, it might not work. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so so you say it got to be some kind of emotional attachment there yeah it has to be it's just a different it's just a different beast they don't get the same scholarships as as the H, as um the power five and fbs schools right so that when you don't get the same amount of scholarships or the transfer portal players it changes your whole recruiting yeah you know what i'm saying it, it changes every it changes all your recruiting man so as a head coach you're already at a disadvantage than the the, the rest of the the college conferences so you only can use that's why Dion brand was so big because he uses his brand yep to attract those kids instead of relying on like these kids rely like these big time schools relying on portals they can rely on um the alumni and they they uh they booster club and things in that nature the HBCUs ain't got that you know what I'm saying because you have to give what is it, I think it's like 63 scholarships of, of, uh, at these power fives at FBS schools, and then you have 25 brand new kids that you can sign in the portal. HBCUs don't have that, so they are at a disadvantage. Mm. And Dion just using his and brand to, the, to, yeah. to put that there. At the end of the day, what's going? I mean, you got a kid that's getting a scholarship from Alabama, Ohio State, right? Or fucking Alcorn State or something. Where do you think they're going? <laughs> going where, and Alabama, not only where you think they going, what's the deeper issue? It's the parents. So we got the very adult parents that are talking bad on Dion. And if y'all got division division one caliber sons, y'all are not sending y'all sons to HBCUs. So that's more the wow. hypocrisy, right? That's more yeah. the hypocrisy for you to say, why is he leaving? Y'all won't send y'all kids there. Y'all ain't. Y'all ain't doing yeah. it. So yeah. just more of the hypocrisy. What's your take, Willie, before we get back to this video? You know, like Mike said, to, to go coach at these places, you got to you got to buy into the culture. It's got to be some form of emotional involvement. And that that alone goes against business ethics. And we can't lose sight that this is business, regardless of what promises he made. And as we touched on, who's to say he didn't fulfill those promises? This is a business. This is how you move in this world. His non-black counterparts do this every single day. At, at my little small little D2 school, I went through three three defensive 
three defensive linemen coaches my whole time there. And everyone that came was ah, rah, rah, rah. That's just, that's how it goes. And nobody blinks. I understand that Dion, you know, had the influence, the, the sight and the gravitas to change the culture and, and, you know, do something even more amazing over the span of, you know, 10 years, you know, compare it to three but let's, he was not going to be there for 10 years. That's what he said in the press conference. You don't you don't retire here. You either get pushed out or you move up. That's it. That's that's just yeah. what it is. Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty He's sure. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, I'm pretty sure all them all them SWAT coaches who've been in there, I'm pretty sure they had opportunities to coach at, a, at FBS, but it's a culture reference. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Okay. So they're, they're, they, they were born in that culture, and they want to stay committed to that HBCU. But to Willie's point, if you if I'm looking at it on, on the surface level, I'm like, oh, that's just a business move. That's that's what college football is now. It's a business, man. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? It's a, it's a business. So Dion, being Dion, took that as a business, but his personal mission had to change. So I don't fault mm-hmm. him at all. Well, let's address the more the elephant in the room. Willie hit on earlier. He was down there getting, you know, stuff stolen, him and his son getting robbed for stuff. They were not that respected by the people. It wasn't Dion. I'm sure Dion probably could tell some stories about stuff that wasn't so good that was going on, but he was still making that sacrifice for them boys. And here we go. Let's bring it full circle. Dion got a son. Dion got a son who is potentially an NFL caliber quarterback. Who, if he stays at Jackson State, he will not get the light shined on him. He won't get the recognition. Mm-hmm. So now Dion have he is just single handedly. Not only change, he just changed fortunes for his whole entire family. He have just gained $30 million. He's put his son in position to become a potential Heisman Trophy winning quarterback, a potential first round draft pick, whether he has the talent or not. It's all there. It's all set up now. There you go. So it's it's a bigger play for Dion. And then you said Dion can say, not only this, I can, can then now maybe go coach an NFL one day and be able to draft my son. We don't know. So how long Dion the coach his son and Pop Warner? He might be the first dad to ever do some shit like this. So let's look at that side. He coached his son in Pop Warner Little League. He coached a high school football team. He took the Jackson State job. He go to the NFL and draft his son. Yeah. Dion maybe write his own story. We can't tell this man what his what his legacy is. And that's dope as hell. And that's dope as hell. We can't, we cannot project. Our aspirations and visions on to another grown ass man, regardless of what his you know status is on this earth. That man got to go, and I think it's dope as hell. Like Gavin said, that would be dope as hell. That would be dope. Can't hate on that man. Stop the hate. Yeah, he got two sons too. He got they they both going with him. But and also you got you got also those those kids that Dion recruited is already in the portal. They already transferring to Colorado. So you know what I mean so. And him pulling Hunter, you know that the the DB that Hunter they had, he he had scholarships from Alabama, USC, and he, he ended up following uh, Dion to Jackson State, and now he's falling into Colorado. So Dion had an impact on those kids, and he set out on that mission, um, and hasn't uh, um, dissuaded from that mission at all, man. So those kids are following him right to Colorado. And that's another one of people's talking points where they say, "What about the kids? He sold the kids out." No. Any of them kids no. who are worth their salt is in the transfer portal. Any of yeah, them kids who remain, yep. yeah, the kids that are still at Jackson State, they are where they belong, right? <laughs> and here we mm-hmm. is. We keep wrestling, you know, education versus uh, sports. Why can't these kids just be happy with a scholarship or a partial scholarship or whatever they got or just being in college? Why do we think for one second less than 1% of football players go to the NFL, right? So why would we think that the majority of pro players should come from HBCU, right? I think the amount of players that are coming from there is sort of par for the course. And to kind of change that culture, that ain't gonna happen in none of our lifetimes, right? I was kind of hitting on the other day, why don't we just bring back the damn ABA basketball? Why don't LeBron them go start back up the ABA? Why don't they go start back up the Negro Leagues? Why don't we just bring it all back? And you know what I mean? We're, we ain't doing that because ain't nobody sacrificing nothing. So quit putting all this on Dion. That's my point. Who else is sacrificing? Nobody. Nobody's doing that, man. Uh, no. Yeah, 
nobody's doing that. I, I don't. I don't, I'm not getting caught putting weeds on that the the whole uh, Dion thing. I just looked at it as, hey, I admire Dion as a player. Definitely a legend. Uh, I think what he the impact he made at Jackson State was phenomenal. Brought a yep. lot of eyes to it. But yep. it, now he's doing it on the bigger stage, man. <laughs> so that's it. Uh, and, and it's a business, dude. It's a it's a freaking business, man. Those who don't understand college football, it's a business. It's not it ain't about no student athletes. An athlete student. <laughs> Especially now with the NIL deals. <laughs> so yeah, you're an athlete student first, man. Like we'll get them grades somehow, but uh <laughs> it's money. Mm-hmm. Real talk. Dr. Uma. Showed you, Charlie. Dion, though. He showed Dr. you. Dr. Uma. And his other one's Dion just one as great. Of the most famous people ever. And his other one's just as great. So listen. Eddie George at Tennessee State. That's one person. We're talking about a system, not an individual. So Dion and these other coaches bring all these athletes from high school to play football, basketball, so forth. The revenue of the HBCU goes up, Envy. As a result of the revenue going up, Charlemagne, the school's got more money. They don't have to subject themselves to closure. They don't have to subject themselves to being dependent on white money. You got HBCUs at risk of being closed. I read something that said almost a half of them. A half may not survive the decade. So this was bigger than football. This was about the survival of the HBCU. It's bigger than Dion, especially, though, Dr. No, yes, no, it is. I think no. We, stop trying you bl- to you're blaming an individual. Trying to, no, you're bl- stop trying to give you're, celebrities no, a pass, no, Charlemagne. No, you're blaming an individual. I'm not blaming him. I'm blaming black men for not being men. But you know what? I'm blaming us listen. for not being men. The reason I'm so there we go. They say that's what another point. They say we are giving Dion a pass. Willie, can you elaborate? What's your thoughts on why are black men saying that other black men are giving Dion the pass for whatever reason? What? Here's my question. For what egregious act are we giving Dion the pass for? What has he done that was so heinous that we got a voice out? We're giving him, you know, he's been getting, he's given a pass for, for what? For what are people claiming? He went back, he quote unquote went back on a promise. He quote unquote uh deserted those kids. I I even heard uh, you know, there was murmurs of people saying that, oh well, you know, Dion li- leaving, that's reminding these some of these student athletes, or as might say athlete students, you know, of their father that left. And you know, and it's it's trauma. Again, I, 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 I'm the last person to fucking agree with Charlemagne, but <laughs> I, I agree. You can't be putting all this weight on one man. Give a celebrity a pass. Celebrities and entertainers are not our leaders. We we can't. I don't even understand that statement. Giving him a pass, you know, my, give him a pass. People are are ecstatic and excited about, you know, supposedly R. Kelly's dropping a new album. And we worried about what 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 Prime is doing. Come come on, but people talking about yeah, our Kelly Drive new album. Like, you know, I'm about to, I'm about to go get that. What 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 moral compass are we following? What are we talking about here? The same people that will say and condemn Coach Prime for it's safe to say actually changing the coach in the little three years that he was there. And they're condemning him, but you know, uh, praising a uh, pending release uh, of a new R. Kelly album. Well, it's, well, not even that. Like you said, you got you got people out here like Joe Biden, right? Joe Biden lied to y'all time and time and time again. Y'all don't hold him accountable. Y'all still gonna vote for him, so y'all can go to hell with that shit. Y'all very people, you Democratic SOBs who sit around here. And let these people keep lying to you and, and going back on their word when this shit is really life and death and really is critical and really matters. This shit really fucking matters, right? And y'all, y'all let these motherfuckers get away with any damn thing. But here we are, holding another black man to the fire. You sons of bitches. Like I said, yeah. go take that smoke to Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and them. Don't bring that smoke. Yeah. Bring that, take it to the right people. That's, I think Mike said earlier, you know, so quick to castrate, you know, black man. And it's, I just think it's, it's, it's too lopsided. Yeah, we need to hold each other accountable for show. You know, that's this platform is all about accountability. It's part of our mission statement. 
at the same time, holy smokes, where is the grace and mercy on the man? There has, in the past couple of days since Coach Prime has announced that he's going to Colorado, has there been any type of broadcasting of anyone saying anything nice about this man? Since he done made a, a he he done made a huge come up as far as career path, and I the mo, social media has not broadcasted anything positive about it, nothing at all. Oh, I, it's, everything but a child of God. We got to yeah. see we, we got to see the bias. We got to see the bias and address the bias. Anytime there's a bias. The, you know, it, it, it's, it nullifies the argument. And the argument is that he's doing something wrong. You got to be nuts. He's doing something wrong whenever the decision is for the best of his family. The two don't go hand in hand. I agree. Real talk. Coach Prime near, you know, he signed his deal. And <laughs> people up in arms. Like you said, he went and met with the team. And Prime first, when he first walked in, I guess he put all the players on notice and told them to hit the transfer portal. You know what I mean? If you, you know, yeah, they in that portal, baby. I mean, why, why wouldn't you though? Why, why wouldn't you hit that portal? Yeah. So. One about bag. Known about the opportunity to do something that hadn't been done in quite some time. And Rick, I'm forever grateful for that opportunity, my man. I appreciate you. I love you. Thank you, love you too. for investing in me. I appreciate it. Now let's get to business. You know what, Jackson State, we got to believe. I'm still going to believe because I've been believing ever since I was a shorty when I told my mother at age of seven, I was going to make a lot of money. I was going to be rich and she was going to never have to work another day of her life. In my action. Why wouldn't it's just so bizarre? Why wouldn't the whole black community get behind Prime? Why wouldn't we hope he do great things? Why wouldn't we want him to go on and fucking beat Nick Saban in the national championship? That wouldn't be dope with his son at quarterback. People wouldn't like yeah. that. They say he, every he, go, they he, say they, they say no, because he could just why can't he do that at Jackson State? Because he tanked. The fuck? Why is that even a question? <laughs> Seriously, why is that even a question? Why can't he do that at Jackson State? Does he tank me? What are we talking about? There you go. Here we go. Let's talk about something that's cultural. What young black uh, student athlete, you know, high school, college, which, how many of these young men want to play offensive line? And that's what. That's what Dion was saying. He said, you know, I'm not about to sacrifice myself to one of these D1 schools. I don't have the I don't have the hogs up front. And black yeah. black men do not want to play offensive linemen. That's just what it is. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mike. But that's yeah. that's 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 the culture. You don't want to play offensive line. So there you go. It was never gonna happen. He was never gonna beat Nick said it was never going to be a reality. And here we go. Every time Dion gives like a, a little speech. He always bring his mom up that he loves his mom. He honors mom. He said, you know, I told my mom do this. She ain't gonna never have to work again. How can you have anything negative to say about this man? Listen to the way, listen to his words. He said, you know, and he all inspiration. He humble and, and he believes in something greater than himself. And he said, and he, he walks it. He walks it how he talk it. And it's nuts. That people that I mean they just own his throat and it's it's insane. You would think he did something heinous, heinous yeah. instead of he, yeah. he moved up in his career, his nuts. Yeah, and they, they're looking at it from a selfish standpoint. And the, the people that's criticizing and giving him uh, a bad light truly don't understand like it what he's doing is even bigger because we have less than five black coaches in the college in the 119 college football. FBS schools. So the fact that he and we always complain about when the white dudes get these get these jobs. Oh, they ain't hired no black coach. They ain't interview no black coach. Now that they you have one, right? <laughs> when we got less than five, 
in all 119 D1 schools. Now he got a bigger platform to continue to shed light and help young men. But the folks are complaining about it, right? It'd be the same folks complaining about if, you know, oh, they ain't never miss it, Ole Miss or USC ain't never hired a black coach in X, X amount of years, yada, 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 yada. Mm-hmm. And then here we have one on the national stage, right? On the bigger stage with uh, bigger opportunity and, and, and more access to resources to mm-hmm. now really do what he set out to do. So, uh, like I said, from you know, for football people, uh, the people who play the sport, I think is is really not that deep. And shit. It's like, hey, it's a business move, man. Like, big mm-hmm. up to him. But if you want to look at it on the level like a Dr. Umar and shit like that, you know, that's you know, you can get into the small intricacies in terms of a person's heart mentality and where and where yeah. they're trying to grow at and stuff like that. Because you got to understand, Dr. Umar is thinking something revolutionary in terms of there you go. Hey, it's about black for black people, right? And mm-hmm. That that's not Dion's personal mission. That was never go. his personal mission, right? There so you, it, 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 you know, even though I admire the passion of Dr. Umar, it, just, it wasn't Dion's personal mission. His mm-hmm. personal mission was to continue to coach and help young black men. He ain't about changing institutions, man. That's yeah. not what his purpose was. There you go. There, there, there's the clash. Yeah, you know, Dr. Umar, you know, he more revolutionary. He more, you know, looking for a more a black utopia. And, you know, that's dope, you know. And there we go, man. Got to talk about that. Just because uh, two individuals like a, maybe a Coach Prime wouldn't necessarily agree with the ideals of Dr. Umar don't mean that there should be hate and malice. You know, no, yeah. we just don't. We still working for the same goal. I'm just not taking it to that, you know, that level. I'm still, you know, playing on this field and got got to respect it, especially whenever family and and lineage and uh and uh you know uh kids are bought into this. You know, you got to you got to look at it from different perspectives. Yeah, uh, they just they just on two different conduits, man. Like Umar is here and, and Dion that way, but it's still it's still in all in the benefit of helping young black men. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah, prime Prime always been about his bread, man. I think I know. And he going to go up there. He going to do an awesome job. He going to coach them boys up. He going to bring a national title. And y'all going to mm-hmm. have to eat that. Y'all got to eat that. Because what y'all think yeah. he is, he ain't. Y'all trying <laughs> to string this man out. This is how y'all trying to do him. That ain't Prime. That ain't, that ain't his mission. Right? Yeah, that's not that's not his mission. <laughs> Why y'all want to do him like this? Yeah, that's definitely not. It's him. easy. It's easy to crucify a, a man in that in that that dark tone flesh. <laughs> so yeah, man, Willie went up there and got them stakes up out of it. We took him down off the cross. Y'all tried to, y'all tried to yeah. crucify Prime. Not on our watch. We won't let y'all do it. I see what y'all tried though. Good attempt. Good attempt. <laughs> But you missed. You missed. We got him down. We got him down. He all right now. He all right. Y'all tried it. They tried it, Willie. Yes, they did. See, they, go, they, they gonna keep trying. Fuck what you heard. <laughs> See, they didn't use they didn't use stakes. They had zip tied them to the cross. So they had him zip tied to the cross. We just went up here and clipped them zip ties and got him down. He down. He all right. He in good hands. Over here at Carpet for the Horse. Woo-hoo. Good hands. <laughs> All right. In good hands over here. And that's from the horse's mouth, baby. Damn in right. Good hands. Mm-hmm. So here we are. If you're watching on Facebook right now, we're going to shut down the Facebook. We're going to, you know, got to come over to YouTube. Uh, we're going to get off this topic for now. Like I said, if y'all, anybody end up coming up and y'all want to revisit, we can. We're going to move on. Like I said, we're going to shut it down. Come over. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the cash app. Cart for the horse, baby. All that. We Subscribe to- button, cash app. Be generous. Support your we about interests. To- we about to get into the uh, to the Britney deal with the Merchant of Death. But if you want that, got to come over to the YouTube to get a taste oh, of that. Man. Oh, man. That's it. That's it. You know, no, Brittany Grinder free. 
She coming home. The merch chick. He coming home. <laughs> going home. <laughs> you know? So here we are. Like I said, we're going to shut down the Facebook stream. Come on over to YouTube. Join the panel. The link to join the panel is pinned to the top of the chat. Everybody's welcome to come up, join the discussion. And that's that. Facebook, come over. But here we are. Like I said, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. All that. It's going down. We're about to get deep into this. We got a legend in the building. You know what I mean? Legends only tonight as per usual. You know what I mean? <laughs> Mike, Mike. Himself, yeah. Mike Washington's joystick wide receiver academy legend, baby. So show. we'll get his perspective. I'm sure you got an opinion on this, Mike, right? Yeah. Like said. yeah. <laughs> so here we are. Brittany Grinder is home. The merchant it went home. Was it a fair exchange? If not, why? Why wasn't it? You know, some people say it was. Some people say it wasn't. Um, and we're going to dive deep into this. You know what I mean? We got this guy here. His name is Victor Booth. Victor Booth is 55 years old, right? No. He's 55. He's been locked up for 15 years. So he's been locked up since he was 40 years old, right? And he's not that old. So that's why people are like, oh, he's still young. He's still able to get out and do things. Maybe two things is true. All right, uh, so he's he 55. He's a former Soviet translator, all right? They call him the Merchant of Death. He's one of the most notorious arms dealers um, in history, I guess. And he was selling most of his arms in Africa. He was causing, you know, coups and a coup de gras and all that in Africa. And he was yeah. part of, like, you see the guys all war-torn with the AK-47s. They say he's responsible. I don't know if y'all ever seen the movie Lord of War with Nicolas Cage. So yeah. if you watch that movie, yeah. that movie was depicted after him. So the movie with Nicolas Cage was depicted after him. Like, this guy has a whole blockbuster $100 million movie after him. How many people can say he's a whole rock star, right? You already know what happened yeah. when he touched down. It got brazy, all right? Um, like I said, he's been locked up since 2008. He got caught in a sting over in Thailand, you know, and the FBI got him. They brought him back to America. He's been in what is known as Little Guantanamo Bay, all right? It's located in Illinois, in the heart of America. So they make sure that's where the, that's where the most highly people go. They say, you want to try to break him out, good luck, right? So it's called Little Guantanamo. And that's where he's been housed for the last 15 years. So my thing is people are up in arms as if for the last 15 years, there, there has been no arms being dealt. Nobody has bought an illegal gun in the last 15 years, I guess. Am I missing something? So Mike, come on in. Brittany Griner's home. Was it a fair exchange? If not, why do you think? Uh, I mean, I'm 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 just gonna give the United States just a benefit of the doubt because that is one of the softest moves or trades in any sport, any culture, or it, or it was just a soft ass look, man. Because you that's that's not a, a fair exchange. Normally, when we exchange in prisoners, is we're like we getting one of ours for that, right? A, a, a you know, a soldier or something like that. But to to exchange someone with that resume, you know, Brittany Grinder. I mean, this dude was. I was reading up. This dude was was blowing up embassies, man, making bombs with fucking toothpicks. Like, come on, man. It's like that is not. And you exchange that resume for Brittany Grinder, man. You just don't. You know what I'm saying? Now, now, granted, she's home. Right, but in terms of what it in terms of the exchange, right? Me personally, I didn't like the exchange. I think it was a weak ass move, and I think that was uh I, I think the deeper issue, if you peel back some layers, it was just it just goes to 
reflect on the soft codified culture that we're moving into, man. You go. All this, you know, everybody wins, no accountability, you can't shame nobody. You know, everyone has a voice. My opinion matters, and all that dumb shit, man. Like, I, I just, I just, I just hate it, man. It's not a fair trade. And then, you know, I was reading comments about, oh, y'all act like because he released, he's gonna go back to do what he want to do. I think I saw a video of that exchange. You know, what I mean, we exchanged Brittany Grinder. They just ex- escorted her back to the, the to the uh, uh, the bus or whatever. And the Kremlin dapped homeboy up. It was like, hey, welcome back. I like. Man, dude is going right back in rotation, man. Because you understand, wars back in the 90s, early 2000s, especially in the 90s, you know, more of those wars was fought on the front lines or de- arm deals and, and stuff like that. Today's wars are fought within, man. They'll come to you from within, whether it's cybersecurity, uh, psyops, you know, dumbass TikTok apps and whatnot. You know what I'm saying? Today's wars is run within. So, you know, they're definitely the fact that we they was pushing for the fact that they was pushing for uh this war criminal, the fact they was pushing for pushing for him like that just lets you know that they want him for a bigger agenda, man. And I was like, so oh I, I didn't I really didn't like that move. I, I really didn't, man. I was I was not a fan of that at all. You know, and, and like you said, Mike, you know, um usually you know we exchange you know, someone like that, the merchant of death, my man, Big Vic, for, you know, like a soldier. And we actually left the Marine over there. We actually left the oh, Marine. Yeah. I yeah. believe he's been over there for five years. Yeah. You know, one one of uh, American spy. And like you said, Mike, you know, uh, we are thankful that the uh, sister, I almost said brother, the sister, um, Brittany, is, is home. But that's some soft shit. The United States, y'all oh. left. Y'all left a whole Marine. You left a Marine, your countrymen over there to still endure, you know, the, the uh physical, mental, psychological abuse he definitely getting over there in the up in the um up in the gulag. <laughs> you know, that, <laughs> it, that ain't that's not okay. I agree, Mike. It's some soft shit, man. That is soft. You know what? <laughs> Me personally, my personal opinion on politics. I, I don't think, you know, really black folks have a place in it. That's my personal opinion. But you can't if 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 uh, the orange man was still up, up, up in office, things would have played out differently. There's no way he would let that go down. Y'all can say what y'all want about that crazy orange bastard, but yeah. he wouldn't have did no soft shit like that. You know, so. and, to say, and well, that's another rabbit hole because of him and him and Putin. <laughs> but, you know, but yeah, definitely, definitely some. uh Definitely a soft move. I, I agree, Mike. But yeah, definitely not gonna overshadow the fact, you know, we're definitely happy, you know, the sister is home because she definitely dealt with some ish, you know. And here we go. It, you know, amongst her culture, it is it seems that people are more in an uproar about the sister having her hair cut. You know what I mean? Are we I I I'm seriously, Mike, we yeah, gotta we, we gotta we we gotta stop this. We got all oh, her hair. This woman was over in the over in the gulag, uh, yeah. a, a jail or prison of hard labor with Eeyore and 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 them. That ain't you know she dealt with some shit and y'all worry about her hair. Yeah, I, you know I just I just yeah I just hope that it that it isn't like. She come over here and start getting book deals and Oprah and interviews with Oprah and all that shit. Next thing you know, got a whole oh, different is, career. Man. Like, hold on, hold on, hold on, oh. hold on. Like, yeah, hold up, man, back up. We, we set. Yeah, we about to do so. We got to have some accountability here. First of all, when I was in China playing over in China in the AFL in China in 2016, when I was over there for eight months, they set us down in the orientation. It's like this is what you do not do here in China, right? So I'm like, hey, listen, I'm gonna put my dick in my pants for eight months. I'm not cat calling because that was like the shit they was giving to us. Like, oh fuck no, I ain't about to fuck around here in China. Are y'all crazy? So <laughs> the fact that she knew this thing, she knew what Russia is like, and the type of state that that country has, and its laws, and the statutes, and its regulations, right? I don't care. Even though it was small vape cartridge, we look at it as small, but you're in somebody else's backyard, man. Yes. Like You can't do that shit. No. You know what I'm saying? And if they give you nine years for that shit, you in some, You can't go into somebody's house 
and fucking take off your shoes and eat their food and expecting everything is cool, man. You just can't do that shit. No. So we got to have some accountability, but knowing this soft ass culture that we in, man, she's going to cash in on this shit, man. Yes, Mike, you already know. You're talking about you hope she don't. You know it's already going. It's already in play, Mike. Already yeah, get ready. It's already in play. You're crazy, dude. <laughs> Real talk. I tell you what. So here we are. Brittany Griner is a woman who, you know, she was, she is what they call blackity black, right? She was kneeling for the anthem and all of that, which I got no issue with. But at the same time, like you said, Mike, let's see if there's some accountability, right? She's going to get these book deals and now she's going to be telling people stand for the anthem and do all these things. She's going to turn the cheek and let's see, you see how she moves forward now. Because she was real with a there for a minute. But now, oh, yeah, you know, that ain't, happening, boy. Yeah. that ain't happening. We have to, with, with a prison exchange like that, if she take a knee, boy, they gonna, oh my god, <laughs> Yo, hey, hey, she take a knee and, and, and that, and you know, that when she goes, when she gets back to the WNBA and they and they had that first game because you know, they're gonna do a whole special montage, they're gonna do a whole little highlight leading up to that, shit. they can probably. Reveal so a video or do a tribute or whatnot. You know what I'm saying? She's gonna get some flowers, whatever the fuck is gonna be. You already know they're gonna do that, right? And as soon as they play stand for the national anthem, all eyes gonna point to your ass. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, let's see what you let's see what you're really about. You about that, and you gonna you gonna you gonna buck up <laughs> and, and stand. Hell no, or, she gonna go just like yeah. this, put that hand on her heart. <laughs> yeah. Shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. You already know. Hey, yeah. hey. So there you go. I tell you what, me and Gavin talked about it earlier. Y'all better start supporting the channel because if we get some sponsorship, we are gonna talk about what they want us to talk about. I tell you that. That's how Britney go conform. Our black asses will conform too. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, if you're telling y'all to go vote, make sure you uh -huh. go vote. All, all, all that. that. Go vote blue no Biden. matter who. You yeah. better hope Biden no slide no bread over here. I tell you what, we vote vote blue no matter who. We'll be all the propaganda. We, we gotta have and that's another topic. We gotta have age limits, age restrictions on them motherfuckers, man. That shit just crazy, dude. They, they can be, they be, they be vote for an 80 motherfucker, a senior citizen and Medicare for presidents, man. Get the fuck on, man. Here we go, Trump. He got to man, got the Gavin keeps saying this. He got to make it. He got to make it, you know, to run for presidency. These yeah. these mamas is old and pruned up. God, yeah, and, and that's why, and that's why there's no, there's there's <clears throat> there's no passing of the torch, passing the baton because he's not only in the as a president level, but the real powers in the in the Congress and the and, and the state level, right? When you got people like Pelosi and and, and and the Mitch no chin homie in office <laughs> for 40 fucking years, man. You can't be in office holding power for 40 years. There's no, no change. Yeah. Right. You, you can't you can't be being a, you can't have a seat for 40 fucking years, dude. Like, come on, son. Like, you ain't never gonna have any change like that because you're so myopic into keeping the power structure, man. And and the reason why they can't relate to today's culture because they they disconnected from today's culture, man. Yeah. They they totally disconnected from it. So you ain't gonna see no change about that. That change is supposed to have already been passed down to somebody in their forties or early fifties who can relate to today's times and standards. But a fucking eighty year old Nancy Pelosi ain't relating to these twenty one year old kids, man. Seriously, real shit, Mike. It's crazy. Motherfucking well, Biden going to sleep on camera and shit, man. Like, come on, man. Like, <laughs> I tell you what, I tell my, I tell my uh, buddies that's Republicans. I say, if y'all allow some wild stuff to go in this next, this uh, next election, I don't want to hear nothing about this y'all country. I don't hear nothing about it. <laughs> Same. Mm -mm -mm. So, banger, you hear banger? See you come in, fam. Yes, sir. Hey, can y'all hear me? Okay. Yeah. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, uh, yes, sir. Am I clear? A little bit faded. You good as you gonna get, banger. You know you. 
Hold on. I want to see if I can tweak your mic <laughs> Man, a little bit. I, okay, I'm, I'm just ahead. seeing this uh this this Brittany Grimes there, and uh on some real shit. Like it was a fair exchange. Period. She free. She back where she needs to be in her own country. I I feel like you know what I'm saying when when you go to another country, you need to know all the rules. You know what I'm saying? That that's just what come with it from me being a uh, more cultural based person. You know what I'm saying? And knowing because I'm gonna be going out the country to uh, do my pilgrimage eventually, so I, I know the things I can and cannot do when I go. You know, it ain't America. Yeah. And since she, but but with her being home, hell yeah. Now I'm a, I'm gonna be honest. I know she went through a whole hell being in there. It ain't that ain't no nice prison. It was it, she probably got left in the honey bun. <laughs> and severe regulations coming from her being, uh, uh, you know, she's a M- WNBA player, so she's used to luxury. You 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 go to jail, that luxury goes straight to struggle and survival. And I know she was eating them cakes, making them damn oozle noodles, oozle noodles soup. You know what I'm saying? That, that, that's why she look all mean now and shit. Making makeup out of magazine paint. Motherfucker, this shit ain't no... It, nah, she, she good. I'm telling you that. And humble. You she think humble you okay? Now, man. You, I mean, think, you think she humble, huh? Yeah, oh, hell yeah. You go from WNBA, I'm a superstar, and I go overseas, I'm a superstar, to you wearing clothes, of somebody probably else war and you know what I'm saying jail regulations ain't easy sometimes you be in jail with no draw if they ain't the right color it can happen like you know what I'm saying like jail is severe bro that 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 shit ain't real you know it ain't it's not the same world and I used to work in a prison and be a CO I I know the note that I tell your ass no before I tell your ass yes if it ain't in policy, you ain't getting it. Get the get out my damn face. Okay. Period. She wasn't like getting you. treated what you think. Ain't no luxury in that market. And like you said, it's worse than over here. That's for damn sure. They that, they get sentenced to hard labor. But there you gotta also understand the sovereign, it's a sovereign and, nation with own their own strict laws, man. Like if you, you look up, I, I think I was reading when I was reading a little bit of reports in Russia, Russia's article 229. I mean, you can get five to 10 years just for 0.7 grams of cannabis. So she might think, oh, that's not a lot. <laughs> well, you in the sovereign nation, mom, you know what I'm saying? Like, you got to buy by their rules, man. I, it just comes back to accountability for me. And there you go. I, there we, you go. Know we ain't going to, we ain't here in America, man. They're going to they gonna put the blame somewhere else. And not to have you. Like, when are you gonna, you know, admit that you was wrong? You effed up. Who who should accountability fall on? Accountability should ultimately fall on the person that's going to suffer the most from the decision. And who suffered the most from this decision? Was it the WNBA? No. Was it was it the United States government? No. It was Britney herself. She yeah. suffered the most from this. So that's where the accountability should lie. Yeah. On her. Let me ask you something. Simple. I see. I wonder because I see a lot of obviously people like a lot of a lot of black folks are upset. I wonder are white men upset that the Merchant of Death is free? I'm gonna go on a limb and say no. I've been I haven't seen no uproar from the white community. I have not, and because the Merchant guess, of Death, he was what? Go ahead. I about I guarantee. Say, that, what, 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 what the hell did you do, bro? They they're mad that they left a marine a U.S. They, marine. They have no reason. Okay, I was going to touch on that, but I'm saying as far as the merchant being swapped for Britney, like you said, they're not mad that the merchant is free. they mad about who he was traded for. There you yeah, go. Because there's they're, a they're man walking up. They're, uh, they're, they're conflicted because it's like, hey, we all afford about Americans coming home, but damn, that American. <laughs> hey, right, so here we go. They got, we, got, we, got a, 
Yeah. There's a guy over there right now by the name of Paul Whelan. He's a former U.S. Marine. All right. He's he's uh he's been charged with espionage. And he's yeah. been in a Russian prison for the last four years. And I want to say he got like a 20-year sentence or some shit, and they ain't letting him out. They probably ain't going to never let him out. And no, he was over there doing espionage, whatever he was doing, allegedly. And, mm -hmm. you know, he's been <laughs> in a Russian jail for the last four years, and people are upset. So people say, why? It was a bad deal, not in buying them eyes, because – the merchant of death was selling all of his weapons in Africa. Only people that was dying was black folks. Y'all must understand. Y'all think they wouldn't benefit. Y'all think if they weren't getting bread from this too? Everybody was winning. What nobody upset yeah. about that? Come on now. The merchant, he did something wrong along the way. He wasn't, like I can see he sold about 85% of his stuff in Africa. They got him for that 15% of shit that he was selling other places that was harming yeah. other people. Right, and, but the shit from Africa, they ain't too much concerned about that. So no. we got Biden come out. I pull this up, and we give our take on it. And Biden and he in this interview and moments ago, moments ago, we got with her, Marshall, uh... First of all, this is like a joke. Why he got these black women behind him like the Secret Service? I don't. I don't even know. Hey, nobody. Why he got he shouldn't have women Go behind ahead, him, period. He shouldn't have women behind him, period. And I'm not talking about this ain't no oh misogynistic bullshit. No, I'm just saying it doesn't show strength. You know what I'm saying? And you, no country runs this country by committee. No country does it, but but United States, right? So having that's not he should either do that by himself or has his uh, have some uh uh Homeland Security agent, whoever the hell it may be, but don't don't have that. You have that conversation behind behind the cameras, man. But that there right there, off rip from image, is is just weak. It just shows the weak, it's just the weakest shame. So weak, weak. weak. It's, it's pandering, Mike. Go ahead, Willie. It's 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 pure pandering. Like you said, this is something that should be behind closed doors, if that. And to broadcast, it's pandering, Mike, it's imagery, because yeah. as, especially as black folks, we fall for this type of pandering 100% of the time. The, yeah. Without question, we are so damn predictable, it makes my stomach hurt. And they know we got this, we got this, you know what I'm saying, this hefty black sister back here with the long hair. Look, y'all, y'all represent it. So you think, you think you represent it, don't you? No, you not. You you a whole queen on the chessboard, but you being used as a pawn. It's complete blasphemy. Exactly, it's sick. Exactly. It's sick. I mean, look, 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 just that image that you freeze. Look what that represents. That 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 means a man who's in a leadership position that's being supported by two women. Not only two black women, one gay or lesbian, <laughs> right? And the other one, and the other one who's used and leveraged the black community but haven't even done anything for the black community and stuff but because he's a woman and you know majority of the voter base is black women so that right all that shit is just soft to me man I, yes it, 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 it cringe. you're right mike you're right it's some soft shit i'm happy i'm happy me and gavin ain't the only one to feel strong about shit like that it's soft as hell but they love it yes uh, i'm about to say so here we are Go ahead, go ahead, Banker. Now I feel like they 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 emasculating the president and the and the military with, with with this type of standpoint. Cause I would be pissed off my boss and two females and you know one of them gay. Like this is some nonsense. We gotta fight for this country led by some bullshit. They, they need to step back, period. I agree. So here we are, like you were saying, this is the world leader, the strongest man in the... This image is supposed to be the might of America. Like, you yes. want to have a couple motherfuckers standing behind you with bazookas, a motherfucker with a machete, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, but here we are. You got some 90-year-old geriatric man Two older, some some fifty year old woman, right? And 
you know, like okay, I didn't season. realize that's Kamala. I because y'all yeah. kept saying black, y'all kept saying black women. Well, like I see one. So well, I think that's Kamala. It and her is husband, probably. Yeah, this is her husband. That's who she. If it ain't, he looks similar. So that's she married to a man just like that. But it's that's sick. Who, I'm sorry. You know what? the the full The full weight of this image just hit me. Hold, I, I okay. Yeah, that's what I, I was referring to. Really, I like you have a gay woman, then you have another woman who, who is so called black woman, but married a white man and just leverage the black community to get the the women vote because eighty eight percent of women vote more than men. So here we go. Y'all out doing this motherfuckers campaign. Y'all out for Biden to say if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. Then y'all out for Kamala's goofy whore ass to to come on here and wearing pearls and Chuck Taylors, and y'all get y'all get pandered into submission. And then folks want to be get take offense when y'all get called sheep. Yeah, y'all are sheep like off of Animal Farm. Yeah, oh, yeah. my y'all just y'all gotta stop. It's sick. Stop falling for the pandering. You're not being represented. And if you are, it's, you're not being represented appropriately. This ain't it. I promise you, it's not it. It's not it. They're not, they got, they got two black women here. They got, two, they got, they got two black women up there. Where's the discussions about, about, you know, help, helping black people solely. And they'll say, and they've said it. We ain't about to, Put in place no policies just to help black people. We'll help. Exactly. It, it ain't come on. So y'all not being represented. You can't say oh, we got two black women back there, and still yet not being represented. Y'all should be in the outrage. Right, but on, on a deeper note, we're just peeling back some layers. Like on that still image, non-verbally, that is saying, "Look who helped to get her back." It wasn't our military. It wasn't anything showing strength. It's a lesbian woman. And they woman. It's like, come on, son. There you go. Like, there you go. So, okay, I'm I'm sorry. So this is the press conference right as she's being released. This is yeah, it. So here we are. Here we are. Get back into it. See what he's saying here. We'll break it down. In the Oval Office, I spoke with Brittany Griner. She's safe. She's on a plane. She's on her way home. After months of being unjustly detained in Russia, held under intolerable circumstances. Brittany will soon be back in the arms of her loved ones, and, uh, and she should have been there all along. This is a day we've worked toward for a long time. We never stopped pushing for her release. It took painstaking and intense negotiations, and I want to thank... Man, this is coming off real Saturday Night Live-ish. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, this is like yeah, a dude. skit or a parody, man. Like, it's Twilight laughable. Zone, it's like... This is so bad. I swear this is like Saturday Night Live. Yeah, Twilight Zone, man. It's embarrassing. It is. It is. And that's that's just what it is. And we can't be mad at, you know, the more extreme Republicans, as I like to call them, for for being so enraged and, and wanting blood for seeing, you know, their country become of this. I get it. I get it. I get it. Yeah, the imagery, the, the, the imagery is so bad. It's look at him. Terrible. Terrible. I think he trying to look that's his mean face. I'm fucking like he on the toilet dropping the deuce. <laughs> Biden trying to get tough. That's Biden cracking down right there. That's Biden being tough. Yeah, man. That's ah, oh, that's terrible, man. Hey, uh, I gotta say this, man. He looked like Anderson Cooper, yo. <laughs> This is a damn joke, man. Hey, man. Baden, and Kamala, Kamala, they've been putting, they've been putting brothers in jail for a long, long time. Yeah, dude. And, and y'all vote for him. It's, it's insane. It's insane. Vote blue no matter who. Keep it up. Like, this is like, like, like some skit where like, he likes some, he coming up like a pimp. This is like oh, it's like pimp fish with these women behind them. I'm sorry. Pimp, pimp, pimp of the year, my, as my man Bill, as my man Bill Bowman would say, she had pimp of the year, pimp of the century, Biden for sure. Look at this, big pimp. All he need is man, a he's... magic dime wand, pimp cup. All he needs the cup, the hat, <laughs> maybe a chain. <laughs> 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 
I mean, he's 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 old, man. He's eighty years old, man. He's like he can barely stand. That's just that's man. That all that right there is just sad. It's just yeah. terrible. <laughs> he really eighty. Yeah, Biden yeah. eighty, man. <laughs> Mike, I never, Mike, I never see you so disgusting. You like, I yeah, that's just, that's just <laughs> disgusting, man. It's, it really is, man. Like it's, I and then and. I, I don't see it getting better, to be honest, man. If we don't have a – we got to – you know, we got to get in there, and this is an off topic, but, man, you got to put that boy Andrew Tate in there, dog. Who? <laughs> Andrew Tate. Um, the boy Tate? Yeah. yeah, yeah the there boy you Tate go. There, there you go. I take it. Andrew Tate for president. Yeah. For sure. I always respect the man that no man get punched in the face. For sure. <laughs> Yeah, I like Tate. You know, Tate on that, uh, as I like to call it, that that raging uh, red pill. But I tell you what, in a time of extremes, it's needed today. We we've gotten so soft. You know what? I never thought you know me and my peers would start sounding like you know those old men of yesteryear calling each other. We sound like uh, we sound like a old Clint East uh, Eastwood movie. What was it? The uh, Grand T- uh, Torino. Grand and all these Torino. Yeah, he's just sitting on the porch, me mugging every day, all the young kids and stuff. And it's, it's just bad. It's like they don't see. It ain't there. There, there is no benefit to playing the victim, to to being soft. There is no benefit. People don't mind playing the victim nowadays. You know, me and Gav, our most viewed video is a you know just some dog attack we uh, happen to see by chance, and the man in the video playing victim. You know, and it is sick. It just happens way too much, man. You're right, Mike. It's, it still hit me, this imagery. And like I said, the orange man would have never let it be. It never let it be. The orange man would have never went up there and not bought that Marine home, too. Some would have had to smack. It just had to be a couple deaths. But it wouldn't happen like that. That's my belief. Okay. So let's see what else he's saying here real quick. All the hardworking public servants across my administration who work tirelessly to secure their release. I also want to thank the UAE for helping us facilitate Brittany's return, because that's where she landed. These past few months have been hell for Brittany and for Charlie and, uh, and her entire family and all her teammates back home. People all across the country have learned about Brittany's story advocated for her release, stood with her through, throughout this terrible ordeal. And I know that support meant a lot to her family. I'm glad to be able to say that Brittany's in good spirits. She uh, She's relieved to finally be heading home. And the fact remains that she's lost months of her life, experienced the needless trauma. She deserves her space, privacy, and time with her loved ones to recover and heal from her time being wrongfully detained. Is Biden, is he running in the victim Olympics? Yes, man. <laughs> Fuck out of here, man. Nobody trying to hear that shit, man. Shit's pandering. This shit's making my fucking skin. Oh, man. Damn. And I, I, never, I haven't I even seen it. It's my first time watching yeah. this, man. It's like, like, come on, man. Like, to have, like, to have that image representing the country is insane. Like, the nuclear family is what supports a powerful nation. The nuclear family is a man and a woman, right? But a woman coming home to a woman, you want me to boo-hoo and cry tears for, man? I just can't support that, man. It just, it just, can't, I just, I just can't support it. It ain't got nothing to do with the community. I there can't go. support the imagery and what that represents. That's the there country. we go. That's just Mike, whack. Dude. Mike, you just touched on something that's that's been my mixed feelings the whole time. Like we said before, uh, previous broadcast in this one, you know, wish not for nothing but the best for that sister. At the same time, as proud, straight black men, you got to understand how we see the world and the images that this is portraying. Yeah. There, There is no space. There is no true space, you know, really for for Mike Washington, uh, a Gavin X or a Willie Walker, because we sound like extremists. Just defending our way of life, which is the nuclear family, as Mike said, is what runs this world. 
it it, it creates that balance and it's and it's sick it's absolutely sick and that's why you will hear a lot of our point of views kind of uh, uh levitate more towards uh, a republican or a um, conservative point of view because because that's what they believe in they believe in a nuclear family where you come over to the democratic side and people do, most people still refuse to uh, understand or acknowledge the fact that the black lives matter movement which is heavily ingrained in the democratic party is yeah. all about dismantling the nuclear family yep. i was listen here i used to travel around with a black lives matter flag on my truck until I read their mission statements, my one boy Bill said, Willie, read their mission statement. And you read it and you go on their page and you got to scroll down. It's, it's a sick joke how far you got to go down on their page to see it. Then it tells you they are not for a man and a woman being together. They look to dismantle that. They look to change things. There is no place for a proud straight man. They, they know. And, and it's sad. And it's a, it's a whole attack on just the natural way of life and it's yeah, and it's enshrouded in it here we go listen the whole movement is enshrouded in in hate and ignorance no room for the shit. no room and that based on biological fact empirical fact or data stats and statistics i can't i had never support anything that based on um statistics and facts. <laughs> i heard that so, so real quick that went over my head mike that so you saying that's her wife, dear? So yeah, in the red, that's her wife. Yeah, I thought that. Whoa, whoa! That was like some. Hold on, Willie. Y'all, that's 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 Brittany Griner's wife. I'm yeah. Thinking that's like some kind of fucking uh, minister of defense or some shit. I'm thinking like she's nah. some high ranking U.S. official. Nah, that's her that's wife. That's Brittany Griner. Oh. Ho, ho. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I thought I thought that was See, that's I didn't, I didn't. Yeah, I thought that was I thought that was Keep saying Hold on, Willie, mute it. Hold on. I mute yourself. Go ahead. Look, see here. Can you hear me? You good. Yeah. Yeah. People are so sensitive today. And, you know, so we sit here and we get on this. But again, I got to say it again. Can you not understand how a straight man sees this? We're not saying that, hey, love how you want to love. But you got to understand how an agenda is being pushed down our throats. My my wife works for corporate America. She works from home. She had had got some invite via email some to to um watch a video take a small class on understanding like you know whatever transgender and this and that and what have you like taking a class on that certain i don't understand that that is that type of indoctrine come on man you got it you gotta you gotta read between the lines like mike like we're saying here today look at the imagery understand where this is going how is it going to affect the youth where and what what and what direction are we moving as a nation is it moving for the better really or the worse we got it we got to consider this man you'll, you'll never see any other country besides the united states who's going to be represented by not only a woman but lesbians as well so that's just insane that's just that's just insane to me, man. It is. Um, yeah, I did it not is. know. I did not know who. The, I, I'm telling you, I thought this was like either like some Black Lives Matter woman. Or I did too. Senator, you know, the senator of Atlanta, or some shit. I didn't know who this was. All right, hold on. We got some big nasty Mr. McKenzie in the building. No, no, brother. Oh, hold on, I can't hear, hear you for some reason. Okay, okay. But yeah, like I said, uh, yeah, I had no clue, Mike. Mike kept saying it. I didn't know what you were saying. That's her mm-hmm. wife. I said, and then I said, hold on. It kept going over my head. And I said, hold on. Yeah. So. Uh, you say you can't hear. You might have to leave out, come back in.
right. All right, we're going to let this keep playing here. Brittany is, uh, is, is a uh, comparable athlete, two-time Olympic gold medalist. What else? I was going to hear you right now. She endured mistreatment and a show What's going on? Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, Can you hear? Yes, sir. What's happening with you fellas? Mike, Mike. What's going on? My man, him seeing the building. Big nasty. <laughs> yeah, we've been going. We've been going here for a minute, Donnell. We start touching on the uh, Brittany Griner situation. We actually talked about Coach Prime first. You can get your takes on that if you want to double back for that. But we said Brittany Griner is home. Right? Was it a fair exchange? If not, you know why wasn't it? And leave your feelings at the door. <laughs> I mean, you know, not, <laughs> naturally it's not a fair exchange, but you know, at the end of the day, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, you you know, I just don't feel it's right to lock somebody up for nine years over cannabis. At the end of the day, I don't care what the trade is, but you locking somebody up for some damn cartridges, she ain't hurt nobody. And you know, people saying, "Oh yeah, well he's a he's a he's a you know worldwide you know uh, you know dude supply guns and stuff." Well, he was getting out in seven years anyway. So regardless, he was about to get out. So in this case, grind her up out of there. She don't need to be up in there. She in Russian prison. Ain't nobody about to survive in a Russian prison for too long. You see her ass. She was she she been missing basically. I couldn't even find her ass for a few. So, you know what I'm saying? So. So somebody I'll tell you said, what, real quick, Willie, before you die, we go, we ain't gonna brush past seven years like that. Ain't no hey, that, that, that's what. And for him, because he fit, he fit, he five, seven years, he'd have been sixty-two, right? Exactly. He still, he still would have been alive. So somebody said you can come out today, or you got seven years. You know what I'm saying? And, and little Guantanamo Bay, you tell me, you say I, I can wait that seven out. <laughs> Shit, not me, but I'm just saying he was in there for how how long was he in there already? Twenty some years? I don't even yeah, know. He, did, he was in for fifteen already. So if you you in there for fifteen, you can bang out seven more. But you okay, talk about me okay. just today okay. going seven years. Yeah, you know I mean, hell nah. He was in, but the nigga already did fifteen. So another seven? Shit, that's like five months. <laughs> so real quick, so so you say you disagree with her getting nine years for cannabis? Yes, absolutely. You, you got a plant that's illegal, technically, probably not there, but you got a plant. You're getting locked up for from a from a Canada boy from a plant. Your body, you know, people fail to realize that, you know, the most common thing with us, uh, our human bodies, is the cannabis plant. That plant. You know what I'm saying? Our body recognizes that plant more than any other plant in the world. People fail to realize, uh, realize that. So it's like, why lock somebody up? You know what I'm saying? Like, it, I don't even know how many carts she had. You know what I'm saying? It's little carts. She ain't selling them. She bringing them overseas. So after practice and after game, she can, you know what I'm saying, ease her body. You know what I'm saying? Her body aches. I mean, shit, ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> hey, Darnell, I got a question for you, Darnell. Are you familiar yes, sir. With, are you familiar with Russian Article 229? I'm not familiar with nothing Russian related besides a Russian AK-47. <laughs> no, so what I was saying is, so uh, Russian Article 229 indicates that for 0 0.07 grams, you can get five to ten years. So, so that's crazy, bro. Well, if she's that on means, sovereign land. She's on sovereign land in somebody else's house. But that don't make it right. You feel what I'm saying? It don't make it right. It makes it right in their laws and their statutes. So look, what, what people fail to realize too, Mike, Mike, is that Russia knew when they when they when they got her on that, they knew that was going to be leverage for them. So it was already planned and plotted that hey. Yeah, this ain't nothing crazy, but we're going to do this, and we're going to do this. So to them, they got leverage now to do whatever they're going to do to try to get back either homeboy they just got out or anybody else they, they see fit for this trade. So for them, it was a win-win regardless. They don't give a damn if they keep Brittany or not. But for, for, for them, they know we're going to want her back. You know what I mean? Like, I heard we got an American soldier, a Marine over there, too. Shit. If I'm the American, I ain't saying if I'm the American president, I do this, but just saying, like, why you got a Marine over up in there? Shit, right now, y'all motherfuckers should be going to get them. Send your uh, SEALs Team 6 or SEAL Teams 9 and go get the motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? He's a fucking Marine. So, you know, at the end of the day, they don't care that much because, you know, yeah, Putin crazy. But you, you see this man, he hasn't even defe uh, defeated freaking Ukraine. He's using, uh, he's using 
old ass artillery. That shit breaking down before you even get to goddamn Ukraine. You know what I'm saying? He cannot defeat the one of the smallest countries over there. I mean, come on now. Yeah, he got nuclear power, but I'm sure we can we can get a sales team go up in there. If he this much lacking and slacking, we can we can go get our, our marine in a yeah, sense. We're, we're the, with the with the political tensions, we're not doing that though. Uh, of course not. Of course not. But just saying though, like it still don't make it right, regardless. I mean, rest, for rest somebody to be in there for nine years. Right, but Russia, if Russia won in this comparison because they showed strength and they didn't buck, right? And they're 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 waiting. The Russia said, "Yeah, we got nuclear weapons," just like North Korea said, "I want to use them." So. Come on, United States. If you want to show that ass and seal that seal team six, we're gonna show you some strengths, man. Bro, they Russia has been capping, bro. Russia has been capping. Wait to bust those missiles, man. And we know Listen, this. they ain't gonna do that stuff, man. Let, let me put it to you like this, my Mike. Russia is capping, bro. Putin talk Putin talk like he got a big like he got a big job. But you know he capping, bro, because look, again, Ukraine. They can't beat Ukraine, right? What is what is Ukraine? How is Ukraine even in this battle? Because they're getting guns and artillery from the Americans and from all the United Nations, right? So in this case, if I'm Putin, to me, America is still in the war. So technically, if I'm in this case, I'm going to target the Americans and I'm going to address the Americans. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, I see y'all motherfuckers, y'all dropping off packages to who I'm trying to destroy. Nah, y'all next. Like, I'm seriously coming after y'all if you really bout it. But he ain't, I'm trying to tell you, bro, he ain't really bout it like that. He would have been trying to, you know what I'm saying? He might have said one or two slick things, but he ain't about it, bro. They cannot yeah, fucking beat Ukraine, bro. I mean, well, we didn't. We couldn't beat Vietnam. We lost that. Who? The United US. States. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you right. But so, I'm I mean, just saying. In terms, of, in terms of comparison, what we can or cannot do, I mean, we'll never know the, 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 the firepower in which a country has, but I wouldn't be fucking with Russia. <laughs> Not at all, because here's the thing. Putin, you know, this Russia ain't the United States. If Putin say, you know what, start pressing little red buttons, there ain't no one to really stop him. There ain't no one else got keys to this. He could do that himself. Well, I'm going to tell you why he's doing it, though. I mean, look who we got in the White House. This old knucklehead who got Alzheimer's. He ain't going to, you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, he not, he not good for the American people. You know what I'm saying? Like, he not good for the American people. Yes. Yeah, I agree. I don't, I'm not a. I'm not so, a fan I mean, you know, if, if I'm Putin and I see him and I, like, look, bro, he started this shit when Putin was in office. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm yeah, and I'm no, just no, giving facts wars, here. Wars, we're, we're in the modern era. War does not run off of firepower itself. They, they run from, they won from inside. And wars are, it's a marathon. So, I mean, you, with cybersecurity, with all the TikTok app stuff, people uh, uh, initially giving out their information which is a billion dollar industry or giving out and selling your your information to third parties and private companies so they can create this you gotta think it, the wars are one on the on the chess field and that check yeah, it's one it's one at the table absolutely 100 percent. yeah so the firepower doesn't matter russia wins wars from within i mean how many absolutely. Times, I mean, spies here and there man so uh in, in terms of sheer firepower i'm not i'm like wars is one in other well, areas than that so to my point, back to, getting back to the topic in terms of the exchange, I I just wasn't a, I just wasn't a fan of it. It was a soft move by America. It didn't show strength, and it kind of was. It's kind of left out in the open, knowing that we have a Marine who fought for the country, right? But but could have maybe felt neglected because we're exchanging. Uh, we're not exchanging resumes of resumes here, man. We're exchanging. Uh, Merchant of death, whatever, and a long list of <laughs> criminal activity, and then you see Brittany Griner, WNBA player. I like, God damn, dog. And then you show that video of of of, of not only two black women, but one being lesbian. In terms of these are the people that who was behind that. I was like, no, man, that it, like that is the imagery is just soft. That is soft right there, man. It's just terrible. So, 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 real quick before we go forward. So, again, to your point, Mike, Mike, I, I agree with you 100%. And I'm not saying that it's right by any means, but I'm not saying it's wrong either. I'm not going to say it's wrong. You know what I'm saying? Again, I just don't feel that over cannabis, she should be locked up for nine years. I don't care if she in Jamaica or wherever the case may be. You know, again, and I'm not saying this wouldn't have happened if Trump was in office, 
But I'm just saying, people did not play when Trump was in office. I got a diesel truck. Diesel gas was three dollars and some change. You know what I'm saying? Early, like early threes. Right now, it's five, almost six dollars. A, a pound of turkey was three dollars. Now it's six dollars. So it's a big difference in our lives. We was going through the pandemic basically, uh, right when Trump exited office, and he was in office or whatnot, or yeah, exiting office, and you know, still like I, I know that that's obviously a huge part of it. But you know, Trump obviously dealt with a lot of it, but. It, he still had control over a lot of the other country leaders. He let them know straight up he ain't playing that bullshit. And he wasn't. He was talking crazy. You know them. They like, shit, he might be for real. He might just be bluffing. But, you know, you can't play with Trump because he was like, all right, send a tweet out on Twitter. And next, you know, some bombs and shit going off. So all I'm saying is that I feel that the world respected Trump and took him more of a threat. And they just knew not to play you know what I'm saying? When it came down to just how they how they move versus Biden, you know, I feel like everybody kind of trying to have your way. See, again, Russia, Ukraine, you try, you see uh, uh, North Korea trying to take out, who is it, Taiwan? You got a lot of different leaders now trying to capitalize on the weak right now. And they weren't playing that shit when Trump was in office. That shit wasn't happening. Trump let them know up front. But you got to understand, you got the, the difference here, and pe most people got to understand, you got to understand what's the what's morally right and wrong versus what is what is is that by law that's the law that's what is morally is subjective so how you feel about something whether it's right or wrong has nothing to do with what is and what is she messed up she got to take accountability whether you feel it's right or wrong is insignificant because right or wrong is just a moral standpoint and i get that uh, so and, and i agree with some of that but i'm gonna say that some laws are just fucked up. You know, I'm going to sp speak on us as black people in general. You know, when we talk about our uh, founding fathers, when they sit there at the table and they, when they start writing the shit, that shit, they weren't including us in the, uh, right now. They considered us one fourth of a person. You know what I'm saying? They considered us less of a dog, less than human. So, I mean, it's because it's law and it's technically right by law. Does that make it right? Well, no, it ain't, it ain't about it being right. It's simply, it's going to, it's what affects your reality. Whether, here we go. I had said it before you came on, uh, uh, Donnell, accountability should fall on a person that's going to benefit or suffer the most from the from the action. And the person that suffered the most, it wasn't the WNBA, it wasn't Britney's wife or girlfriend. You know, it wasn't the U.S. government. It was Britney herself. She suffered the most, and will continue to deal with you know what she dealt with over there in the gulag. We can't, we can't, like Mike said, we can't say, oh, well, it's morally wrong. Yeah, a lot of laws and stuff that were in place, you know, uh, the black man being whatever, one third of a human, whatever the fuck the one number third, was. One fourth, yeah. Whatever it was, yeah, it don't mean it's morally right or just at the same time. These laws and rules, they govern our lives and we must move accordingly. And that's, that's another thing about, you know, just picking our fights. You know, we got to learn how to where to pick our fights. Got to know when to hold them, when to fold them. And you, you got to move accordingly. Can't be putting energy in certain places whenever you can put it elsewhere that, that uh, you know, can have a significant impact. We can't sit here and say, oh, it's not right. I agree. I, I, I feel you, Big Nancy. Yeah, I, I think that's extreme. You know, a little bit of herb. But as as Mike said, that's their sovereign nation. If I had my own sovereign nation and I was like, oh, you know, you got to learn how to fight by the time you this age or you or you this. Well, you're going to say and tell me that I'm wrong. This my place. No, you're not. Put you in the gulag, too. You got to respect the rules, man. You got to respect it. You just got to risk. You, you can't do that. It's, I think it's kind of hypocritical for anyone to say that, because if any any man has his rules, I'm pretty sure as as much as I admire Mike Mike, if he has his place, you know, with his specific Mike Mike rules, it may be one or two I don't agree with. I can't sit there and say, Mike, this is bullshit. So, so, <laughs> let, me, let, so, so let me ask you this real quick, all y'all this real quick. Let's say that's just an average, or, or excuse me, a middle a middle to high class white uh, Russian or American. Do they get the same consequences, yes or no? Wait. I mean, no. I mean, rules are... If they're, if, if, if they're, if they're, if, if this person was a less of a profile person, would these same rules have been applied to this other white Russian, Ro okay, uh, Romanian, or uh, American? No, no, because I, life, is, life is not fair. So, so, so my point exactly. So, yeah, life's not fair. So, again, you know, we go to the thing where, you know, the, the, it's, only, it's only, she she got this 
and been made, been made an example of because of who she is. So, and that's the reason why I say get her the fuck up out of there because they're punishing her because of who she is. If this was a white man, you wouldn't even have heard about this shit. And that's the reason why. Saying. I, that's why I say, like, get her the fuck out of there. I, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's things where it's just, it's, I get, you know, yes, our sovereign nation, these are our rules, but the rules only apply to some. And that's where I'm getting at. The rules don't apply to everybody. And that's why I say that for this here particular situation, because I'm sure that there's been so many other people who have gotten the same thing and a cop with more, but because they were white, they got a slap on the wrist, keep it moving. I'm taking this and I'm confiscating this. Don't do it again. So in this case, you know, I just can't see it fit. I don't care where you at, you know, for a goddamn plant that grows that's outside of your front yard if you wanted to, you know what I'm saying? And you'd be locked up for nine years in one of the most harshest places in the world. It's just not. I mean, saying, again, yeah, it's, it's not right. It's not fair. But again, because of if it's a white male or even a white female, this wouldn't be. This wouldn't even be a thing. We wouldn't be discussing this at all. We would never have a discussion like this. No, so, that, that's not how laws and and that's not how laws are governed. Laws are created to control behavior, and so they're not. Laws are created to what? Control behavior, so they're not. Okay, so 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 all. real quick, they're so not, real quick, they're not so, fit for all. So you made it. You brought up the point: white versus black, but. You can just bring up men to women. Women don't get the same treatment as as men when it comes to the same laws. So that's it. it yes and no. It doesn't happen that way. So so let me ask you this: Who who governs the who who makes the laws? The folks that's in power. Here in America, who makes the laws? The folks that's in power. No. Nah. What you mean? What you mean? What's no. the bar? Mike 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 Mike. What's the bar? What you mean? What's the bar? The executive branch cr- makes the laws. Well, so, I mean, what are you trying to go? So, you going Mike, deep right Mike. now? Are you trying? I, I was going here. Are you no, trying I, to say like, the, are, like the rich people, like Jeff Bezos? Are they? Do they create the laws with their money and lobby? No, no, lobby no, no. These, so, so, so technically, that? with power and money, somewhat yes. But you got to understand what law we follow here in America. And I'm not sure about Russian, but it makes me want to kind of look it up and see. More so, I'm sure there is definitely different than what it is here. But here, you ever hear a lawyer say, uh, my bar number is this, the judge bar number this? The bar is the British association that we follow. We follow the British law here in America. It's not even a fucking American law that we follow. That's my point. Okay. We don't make these laws up. You see what yeah, I'm saying? I mean, yeah, we're, 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 we're being governed. We're, we're being governed by a British institute, basically, not American. Uh, we speak, we, we, we the, speak the king's English. We speak in the King's English, right? We drive on the right yeah, side of the road, right? The, the U.S. Constitution is law. I'm not understanding where you're going with this. But that's, All I'm saying is, you it's, know, it's, it's, Brittany, Brittany, Brittany could have been detained. You're right, Don. I see where you're going with this. She could have been detained simply because of her celebrity. That's and, it. That's and all I'm saying. saying. And, and here we go. But at, does that excuse? We can't excuse the ignorance. Not knowing the law does not excuse you from it. You yeah. here's the thing, and we all talk about being black folks and how it ain't fair. Acknowledge it and move accordingly. It ain't fair. Right. So don't act like they're gonna treat you fairly. So move most swiftly. Don't play in these twisted sick games and then want to say, ah, you you got me. No, it yeah. that ain't some mistakes I mean, can't, can't be made. Yeah. I, That's I just agree. Really yeah. I agree. You gotta take some accountability. Like when I was in China living for eight months as a professional athlete, they set us down the orientation, told us what you do and don't do in China. Cause I ain't trying to be in some gulag in China, dude. Like, yeah, come on. like come on. Like, and, and I get that. I, I, I do get that. I, I mean, I, I get that. You know what I mean? But, you know, people, you know what I'm saying? If, if you believe in, in whatever your religion is, our religion pretty much has the same thing. We humans, we're going to make mistakes. You know what I'm saying? So you can't just go on first strike and just punish somebody for the first goddamn offense and say, you got 10 years. They can do whatever oh, so they do want. Or do you think there should be like some form of universal rule or, or universal law? That's sort of what you're hitting on. Like, like no matter what you do in the world, you should have the same constant consequences. Should be equal, no matter where we at. This should, you know what I mean. And that's just like Mike said. That's not how it works. Like Willie said, perfect world, yeah. But everybody who govern their lands got their rules. 
even yes. down to our own households. So, Darnell, you can't be hypocritical. If if I come in your house and you tell me to take my shoes off, we're going to take our fucking shoes off. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, agree. You know I mean? Agree. I mean, I don't see where that's hypocritical. I'm just saying that, you know, it's different. That's rules of the house and there's rules to the land. But we technically, that's that's the common law. We don't they, technically they, follow they, common law. They still are circumventing around controlling behavior. They're still controlling behavior. I mean, at the end of the day, I agree with you, fellas. I do. I give 100% what you're saying. All I'm saying is, regardless, is that because of her status alone, she was targeted. And it yes. was it was an easy way for and them. It, it was easy, but here we go. Let's let's get Again, down. So hold on, so hold on. It was easy. So so hold on. It was an easy way for the government to get back what they wanted, which was they got. You know what I'm saying? That yes. was that was the whole point and the whole plot. You see yes, what I'm saying? Agreed, one hundred percent agreed. But here we go. If Brittany does not voluntarily make the decision to carry this pen, does she end up in this predicament? And the answer is no. So again, too. So you know, and this is another and thing they, too. And she got an orientation. It's not her first time. She had an orientation about what to do in China, what to do in Russia and what not to do. And Broke she chose to go against it. Broke the rules, Dennis the Menace. You know. You know, and again, I I get it, man. I just you know, I I, I guess because I, I I'm a firm believer in cannabis all the way, one hundred percent. You know, I, I see the plant that is so helpful, helpful versus harmful. Yes. And I see it being discriminated against, even though it is the oldest plant, or I can't say oldest plant, but at least one of the first original uh, 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 um, plants on Earth that's been documented back millions of years. You know, what I'm saying being used as medicine and everything else. So you know, I just can't, I just hate when people hate against it versus try to find out the true uh, benefits of it. I, 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 yeah, this ain't this ain't about no, no, cannabis, I, cannabis though. This is this is about Britney and accepting accountability. It ain't about cannabis. No, I agree. I'm just saying for people. somebody who has a yeah. mad card going over across sea, she might technically use it for like it might be something for real she's using it for. This is a legit medical thing here. You know what I mean? So I could see she was like still or like you know bringing them over and try to sell them. And you know, she bringing her own personal stash. She got a mad card. You know what I mean? Yeah, it might not apply in Russia, but it's just you know sometimes. Again, if she was anybody else, China, a white male, China white has, woman. China has the same rules, man. China has the same strict laws. You don't see WNBA I, I players did. as in China. I, I, back. I, I, now, China, I, I believe China, if it happened to China, it would be done with for anybody damn over there. But Russia, I have a hard time believing that this would have happened to a white male American or a white male Russian. You know what I'm saying, over there. I just don't see Rob, it happen. And that's Rob the part said, I have a problem with. Rob said Brittany been taking a uh, herb over there. And most likely that's true. And and again, Donnell, not disagreeing with you saying that, you know, if this wasn't Brittany, they would not have used her as leverage to yeah. get, you know, the merchant of death. Yes, for sure they did that. That's yes, they did. At I the mean, same time, if she don't have the pen, then they can't they can't act on it. But yes, for sure. They took her and they said, you know what? Yes, Donnell, they took her back closer and said, We're gonna use you as bait. We're gonna get our guy. Yes, for yeah. sure. That's it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and there, and that, that's yeah. And there goes your argument. It's not a mistake. If she's been doing it, she's deliberately choosing to break their laws. Yeah. And 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 I'm all for the rebel movement. I'm all for bucking the system. Trust and believe me to the core. At the same time, <laughs> so, so, so again, let's look at let's look at all the other men and women going over. I'm just I'm all making the cases. Brittany Gardner, she is. She's a higher status. She's an yeah. easier target. You see what I'm yeah. saying? That's what I'm saying. This white he's male nice. walking through the thing, he's a less targeted person. Because he's a white male, he's already been looked at a lot less, is all I'm saying. So all I'm saying is, I'm looking at the targeting factors more so than I am the cannabis factor. Yeah, yeah. she's been doing it probably since she's been over there, but so has that white man. So has that white woman. You see what I'm saying? They've been doing yeah, the same shit, good. but because they're less targeted. Yeah, she's not right right now. No, I heard that, I heard, but we can't start running the Victim Olympics now. See, we can't yeah. say, oh, you know, we can bring that right home to America and start saying, you know, they get away with stuff. We can't do this. Oh, I leave out of Walmart. They check my receipt. They check her receipt. Like, we can't but start running that path. See what I'm saying? It's it's a, it is. Well, it we is don't a say fact. that, but... Well, I'm just saying, you want to look at you. You want to look at the real case here. All I'm saying is, is that, it, all I'm saying is, again, this is a targeted situation. That's the situation I'm looking at. It is. It like, is. It's not fair, Darnell. That's the reality of the situation, man. Like, then, there we fair. go. 
Yeah, you ain't got the you ain't got the complexion for the protection, baby. <laughs> Damn sure Real don't. Tough. Real tough. Real tough. I like man. that. One. <laughs> yeah, I like that. We're not disagreeing with you, Darnell. We just you know you got to understand, like shit, life ain't fair. We are, we know what you're saying, though, for sure. You know what I mean? But, you know we got to move, play the hand we dealt, and play the hell out of that motherfucker. And bluff, bluff as long as you can. Show it, characteristic grit and incredible dignity. She represents the best America, the best about America. It is across the board, everything about her. She wrote to me back in July. So he says she represents the best of America. This is a woman who was just taking a knee, saying "fuck America," right? Or something along them lines, right? Come on, come on, come so, on. So, why are you talking now about three sides of your mouth, you goofy motherfucker? You trying to get some votes? You pandering? You pandering? And you and know this, who the largest vote comes from? There we go. I, Mike, I get it. It's, 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 it is. It's. I keep saying it, sisters. They literally rubbing shit on y'all face, telling y'all it's a charcoal mask and it's gonna foliate y'all skin. That shit they rubbing on y'all face, and y'all think it's cute. Y'all, it, he literally sitting there just smearing shit on y'all face. Oh, we love Brittany Griner. Trust me, that ain't that ain't that's not how they feel about her. That's not their sentiment. This is all chess, and you got to stop being pawns in a game. It, seriously, you got to stop. This type of pandering is sick. And Mike, I don't know why they don't see it like that. I don't know why the, the, the majority of the people see this and they're like, yeah, yeah, they all stupid and <laughs> cheering. And it's it's just bad. It's bad. It's bad. I remember, I remember whenever uh Obama was in office. And that's the only time I know for sure me and Gavin have ever voted. You know, black men coming to office, whatever. We was on that black the black train at the time. And and he got he, he got uh elected into office. Everybody's outside cheering and shit. And me and Gavin was sitting down, I think, down his mom's crib, down on Franklin. Just like, you know, we'll see what happens. And was not impressed. Was not impressed. Y'all gotta stop being, y'all gotta stop, y'all gotta grow up and continue to observe. Observe the pandering and the gaslighting, and you'll be looking just as disgusted as Mike. Y'all get it. it's sick. It's sick. You gotta stop. They give y'all Obama phone. And some food stamps, and put y'all in air conditioned projects, and y'all talking about y'all y'all uh, y'all uh, financially stable. I've heard that. I heard somebody say, "Yeah, I get food stamps and and Medicaid and and this. I'm I'm financially stable. How in the hell are you financially stable depending on the government? That is some of the most bizarro land shit I've ever heard. Can never be fin uh, financially stable depending on another system. <laughs> Come on." Once they take that system away, what happens? Oh, shit. There you go. And, th and that's what they say. No, that, you don't get it. They will never take it away. That's, yeah, okay. the, that's the illusion. They so, so never take this away. So even, even I'm going to put it like this, too. So even the Americans who don't rely on that um, child support, or excuse me, not child support, but let's say uh, the, the food stamps and whatever housing, let's say they took away all the food, the food system alone, the food chain. They don't forget we rely on that system too. So us as regular Americans who are financially stable, let's talk about it. Ain't just about being financially stable. You know what I mean? It's about being stable all the way around. You know, really, you got chickens and you got some other animals. Some shit happened today. You got some food in the back. You know what I'm saying? Other people got gardens. So you know, it's more than one system that we all rely on. You know what I'm saying? It's a matter of are you prepared if something was were to happen with these systems to replace. Your 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 food and your and your and your funds and things like that. You know what I mean? Like it, it, it's a bigger thing than just being on food stamps. It's it's the whole system that we cannot all be dependent on. Yeah, I just read that comment. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, I, it is. Yeah, so I just had to stop that. It only went for a couple seconds, but he started capping. Oh, she's the best American and. You know, Biden, holy hell. She didn't ask for special treatment, even though we've been working on a release from the day one. She requested a simple quote, please don't forget about me and the other American detainees. Please do all you can to bring us home. We never forgot about Brittany. We've not forgotten about Paul Whelan, 
who's been unjustly detained in Russia for years. This was not a choice of which American to bring home. We brought home Trevor Reed when we had a chance early this year. Sadly, for totally illegitimate reasons, Russia is treating Paul's case differently than Brittany's. And while we have not yet succeeded in securing Paul's release, we are not giving up. We will never give up. We remain in So there you got it. You know, the other guy, he's been over there for four years. You know, his family's wondering, why can't y'all get him out? You know, and I guess they like, look. I, like I said, Brittany Griner ain't a big enough pawn to get him out. I don't think you getting him out. Fuck, who you gonna get over there? Fucking LeBron James, Obama? Goddamn. Who you get? <laughs> Man, first of all, oh, deals ain't never one. Deals ain't never a one-to-one -one trade off. So the fact that you you can get a high profile guy for a less profile woman and couldn't and couldn't get Paul Wheeling in that deal, I was like, man, that's sad as hell. It's bro. raw. It is. That's it's sad. like it's it's like give us Paul, we'll give you the merch, and Brittany allow her to take a long home. It ain't a big deal, seriously. Yeah, that that trade, let's understand something. Nate, they, they're acting like there's so much. They put so much into this. No, all Biden did was give in to to Russia's scheme. He just gave in. He gave a whole. He gave, he gave a whole. To politics. He gave into a, a vote. They got Democrats yeah. trying to save face. That's what he gave into. It yeah. got nothing to do with right. He yeah. gave into. Remember, he need to vote. He need to make. They got to save face. Democrats are looking terrible right now. This is yeah. a win for them, regardless. That's why they stay. Yeah. And, and that's that's strong. why that's why they represent him in the background, because who are the highest percentage of voters? Black there women. You go, Mike. Women, black women, and lesbians, man. Like, come what the fuck, man? God, Gotta man. pander to him. Gotta pander to him. Um you you y'all, y'all proud ass straight men, black, white, indifferent, whatever. Y'all, y'all suckers ain't voting for us, so we ain't pandering to y'all. The proud man ain't voting for no Democratic Party. Cause they ain't they not for the nuclear family. How can you vote for a party that wants to destroy you? It makes no sense. Got no common only interest. Man for us, only man that is Biden say, look, the only man that is voting for us is the man made vote for us by his mama, his girl, his wife, his auntie, his grandma. So I gotta reach them. Those who are made the Women make the men vote. If it wasn't for the women, the men simply don't vote at all, or they true they pick their own interests, which ain't which ain't that side, right? So <laughs> yeah. those men that choose to vote that way are, are simply swayed by the women. The ganocracy, baby. Simps, man. They 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 under they under the uh, power and authority of the ganocracy or the sixty six. Yeah, simps, man. Can't stand. <laughs> What you saying, Donnell? You saying something? No, I didn't say nothing. Okay. But yeah, that's what I was saying, man. Uh, yeah, majority of men, speak, myself included, that's why I'm saying it because I know when I would do it, it because fuck, my mama and them said do it. It's the right thing to do, mm -hmm. right? Without even doing my own research or know what my interest was. Exactly. The women said it was the, always the women. Yeah. Always. The women always told me it was the right thing to do. You're supposed yep. to do it. This is what do what the hell you're supposed to do. And then once you start figuring it out for yourself, you say, whoa, I'll make my own fucking decisions. Exactly. You know? And that's that's and that comes from if we're peeling back another layer, growing up, daddy not around and mama saying your daddy ain't shit. So you ain't got no structure, no guidance, no discipline. Real talk. Facts. Facts. And back back, back on brother, back back to brother Dion. We need to give our men. The same grace we give our mothers and and the women, and we need to be just as harsh and just mental on the women as we are with our with the men and the father. Seriously, because here we go. If if that here we go, is it safe to say that if that was some superstar female athlete in in a prime time sp space, would she be so heavily crucified? Because now you know women coach too. So if it was a if this was a woman, would she be so heavily crucified? I would make the argument that no, she wouldn't. They say, look at her making changes. The first this, the first that. That's would be that would be she cool. independent. She leveling up. Yeah, she a boss. The, the, yeah. the narrative would be totally different. We got exactly. we got to see the obstacles. Like like Mike said earlier, it's psychological. It is it uh, some 
it, we can't play the victim Olympics. So I'm very hesitant to say a lot of stuff is systematic, but that's not an excuse. We can't use that as an excuse. Acknowledge it and fucking move accordingly. That's yeah. all. Yeah. Yeah. So bye. And man, he pandering hard, huh? This video making me cringe, though. <laughs> God damn. Hey, you traumatizing Mike for him. <laughs> Close touch with Paul's family, the Whelan family. And my thoughts and prayers are with them today. They have to have such mixed emotions today. And we'll keep negotiating in good faith for Paul's release. I guarantee that. I say that to the family. I guarantee you. And I urge Russia to do the same to ensure that Paul's health and you and humane treatment un, uh, maintained until we can be able to bring him home. Shut up. I don't want any American to sit wrongfully detained in, in one extra day if we can bring that person home. My administration has now brought home dozens of Americans who were wrongfully detained or held hostage abroad, many of whom had been held since before I took office. And today we also remember Stop. the other Americans Stop. that are being held hostage. Stop. Stop. Wrongfully detained internationally, but you have a vice president who wrongfully entertained black young black men with marijuana charges. Oh my god. Okay, I can't I can't do much more of this. I tell you yeah, what, <laughs> welcome home, welcome home, Brittany. Welcome, welcome home, Brittany. We we yeah, have you going by and you know, going with your shit, man. That's crazy. Bro, I can't watch his speeches, bro. I just can't even I can't listen to that dude, bro. I for real can't. <laughs> So here we go. Talk about sellouts. Here we go. We all up here and we've been we've been bashing the Democratic Party something terrible. They would call us sellouts. You know, they they that's they would. I about guarantee it. Not to our fucking face about that much, but they they murmur it, you know, behind closed doors. Why is that? Like I said, the 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 culture is vote blue no matter who. Don't matter. They up here talking about I keep hot sauce in my purse. If you don't vote for me, you ain't black. They, this is some old vaudeville shucking and jabbing shit. And it's like Mike said, it hurts. It's actually physically painful. Yeah. And that, and that knowing in politics, most black people really don't do the history, man. Not knowing that the original KKK was Democrats. It was Democratic. Yeah. And the, the first national black caucus was actually Republican. And yeah, yep. so, uh, that that's that's a whole history lesson. But you you, yep. you try to <laughs> you try to lead the horse you try to lead the horse to the water, man. You are gonna get pushed back, especially if they woman. Oh my god! As soon as a woman say, "Oh, I'm offended" or "I don't feel like," that's your ass, bro. You gonna <laughs> <See that? laughs> okay. okay, welcome in, Serge. How you feeling tonight, family? Man, I'm tired of shit. Getting my ass kicked at work, but I'm here. <laughs> uh, you see the question? You see it at the bottom of the screen, right? Uh, Brittany Grinder's home. Was it a fair exchange? <laughs> if not, hey, why? That was not no fucking fair exchange, man. I don't care what nobody say, man. I mean, okay. I I'm going to get crucified for this probably by the viewers, but I don't give a damn. Yeah. Brittany Garner probably was being held for un for an unreasonable sentence. I will agree to that. However, the Merchant of Death. I, I want y'all to understand the nickname, the Merchant of Death. This boy got this man got sentenced and convicted for, I believe, conspiracy to murder American citizens. Hold on, hold on. He, uh, no, hold on now. I want you to get, I want you to be spreading misinformation. So, Victor Booth, he is uh 55 years old. Um, yes. he's, a, he's, a, he's a former Soviet translator. He got arrested for, um, he was a weapon smuggler. I don't know if you ever arms seen dealer. the movie Lord of War, Lord of War. Yeah, he's, a, he's an arms State. dealer. So, so, so they say guns don't kill people, people kill people. So, so. Was he doing how much wrong was he doing worse than the National Armory set up on the corner or Walmart or anybody else selling firearms? I mean, America's the biggest arms dealer in the world, so it's kind of a contradiction, but at the same time, 
you comparing an arms dealer to possession of marijuana. That's really what you you comparing. I I, don't, I can't see it no other way. So, was it a fair trade? Hell no. I mean, but hey, I mean, America wanted their 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 hometown hero back. I guess so. Okay, hey. so so it was unfair. I mean, so before you before you say that, before you say that, is she truly considered an American hero? First and foremost, because honestly, <clears throat> prior to her being released, I still didn't see a lot of uh, people for her. You know, I see more of the black community, yes, and part of the you know LG, the you know the one group, um, but most people that I feel like outside of that, you know, was completely satisfied with her being locked up saying never released her and all this other stuff. So, I mean, you know, did most of America truly look at her as a hero? Is my, my main question. There was clearly enough push for it to be, uh, to be supposed. So before you hopped on Mike, Mike and Gavin really agree. And I'd also agree as well. You know, it's the agenda for these votes is what really got her out of there. You know what I mean? So, uh, I don't think it was necessarily for, you know, the people. It was more so for a certain group of people. But, you know, I, I just don't, from what I've seen, at least through, you know, news articles and social media, like there's not a lot of people like going, oh, get Gardner out. You know, you see athletes and stuff like that. But outside of that, nah, I ain't see too much Brittany Gardner support of nothing. Look, they ain't going to free somebody for nothing. I mean, so again, it's the agenda stuff. that Mike, Mike, and Gab discussed. That's what that's the that's, that's what I'm saying. It's the, uh, yeah, the, I mean, the I, it, I it was basically that. for the votes for the votes. So Biden and as we discussed, women in general and 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 and, 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 and the gay community, I can, I they're can heavy on that. the votes. Heavy on the votes. I I can see that. Like I I I won't say that that's what it is, but I if I wouldn't be shocked. Y'all can be completely right on that. Like I just, but I'm just, I'm just. My question mainly is, you know, would y'all truly consider her technically as an American hero? You know what I mean? I wouldn't. No. no. So, I would so not. that's what I'm saying. Do 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 most of America look at her as an American hero? No. 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 So, so I would, I wouldn't say that we went and got her because she's an American hero for sure. It's more so the 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 the, the vote push, political parties stuff. I can see that. I mean, just look, just look at the video. I mean, look what that represents. Representation. Look, look what that represents in the background, man. So that you have the answer right there. And I just wanted to clarify that it wasn't for the American people. Watch these out. That wasn't that. So that that's mainly my point to what you were saying, Serge. That it definitely wasn't for the American people. It's more so a political thing. They pushing the narrative is for the American people. The mouth of it. The American the people. The American people is thinking how how you guys are thinking. <laughs> Why is our Marine still locked up? Who? Who'd you say, D-Mac? The American people is asking the question, why is our Marine still locked up? That's what the American uh, people want to know. That's more what I'm seeing. So it's definitely not what the American people wanted. Just saying that. Hey, look, I'm not against you. I didn't. I mean, I didn't care for it. I don't think it was a fair trade. Like, I just, just the, just, just the, like, I don't know. I just don't see it. I just don't see it as a fair trade on on my behalf, in my opinion. Like, okay. it's just so real quick. I, not. I was gonna rewind for you and Darnell. I know y'all just getting here on the first topic. I don't know if y'all had an opinion on it, but why you here? So we're saying Coach Prime is leaving Jackson State, and that was what we sort of touched on near. And we're just asking, you know, is he wrong? If so, why you think? So I'm gonna ask the question first. Oh, go ahead, sir. I'm sorry. I don't think Prime wrong. I think so. Prime's original, uh, his 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 original promise. From from what I've from what I can remember, was that he was going to go to Jackson State, make it a competitive university, uh, uh, make it a contender, and leave it better than what he than where where he got it. In my opinion, he did all of those. 
did it, sure did, did. It, did, did it did it come faster than most people thought yeah is he supposed to stay stagnant though no like people don't people don't understand the 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 the, the, the ins and outs of it first and foremost Jackson State's uh, rec- football football recruiting budget is fifteen thousand dollars. That's that's how much they have to recruit. That's their recruiting budget. Colorado's uh, Colorado University's recruiting budget is more than five hundred k. Just that magnitude alone. On top of that, uh, your boy Prime made Jackson State and Jackson the the the, the community the city or or the the bur- whatever that is down there because I'm not from Florida or wherever that is he made that whole town rich they made north of 30 million dollars while prime was there prime made 300k a year and donated half you see what I'm saying so yeah he should have he should leave on top of that who wants to stay somewhere and continue to help where he's not wanted prime's not wanted there Dion, swack and jackson state never wanted Dion the coach they wanted Dion the celebrity that's what they got they also got Dion the coach they didn't appreciate Dion the coach Dion the coach is leaving they still got Dion celebrity there that 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 won't be erased. He was there. You know what I mean? They failed to realize how valuable he was. No, he should leave. Congratulations, Prime. Congratulations, thank you, Prime. And thank you for what you have done. And Absolutely. I, and I look forward to seeing what else you're gonna do. Absolutely. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna say I'm gonna add to that because you know, when you think about it, you know. Plan for Alo Corpo. I've never been through a coach's change whatsoever. Going to college, University uh, Cincinnati, Division One college. I'm, I'm not sure if Willie experienced this, but I did. <laughs> you know, I'm down there. Coach, you know, Coach Mark D'Antonio brought me in, and um, my cousin Antoine Horton. You know, he from uh, Rochester. You know, what I'm saying he was down there too. He was down there a couple years before me. He was recruited by Coach Minner, Rick Minner. You know, what I'm saying he ended up going to Notre Dame. The year before I, or the year that I came in, so I was being recruited again by Mark D'Antonio. Say 2006, going into 2007, he left. You know what I'm saying, and went to Michigan State. And I found out we, me, me and all the players, we found out from people on campus, like, yeah, y'all coach leaving y'all. What y'all about to do? We like what? We go turn on the news, and here it is. He he going to Michigan State. You know what I'm saying, Brian Kelly. You know what I'm saying, he did it a few years later to a few classes older than me. So you know. Uh, it's a business. College is a business. And that's what I learned in college because, you know, I love football. And, and, and going through high school, again, I've never been to a coach's change. So for me, going through that, it honestly was a, was a was a bad experience for me because I'm like, yo, what the fuck? Like, somebody bring you in. Imagine your manager coming, uh, you working for, and next day you got a whole other manager without notice and he running shit completely different. And it's just on some some rough shit. Like, yo, what the fuck? But you feel disrespected because the other coach left. But at the end of the day, college is a business. Because beyond who he is, and he, he left like any other coach would have left. The only difference, and I respect Dion for this here, is he stayed for the last game. The other coaches normally don't stay to the last game, the bowl game. The other coaches are out before the bowl game, but they're not crucified like Dion's been crucified. He, they're not getting much attention as Dion's getting attention again. And I'm not trying to display white and black, but I'm just looking at the, the obvious here is that literally the University of Cincinnati coach just left. He left. Right, uh, Coach Luke Fit, uh, uh, Luke Fickle. He just left, and here it is. We just had to hire another coach. You know what I'm saying? If we had a bowl game, he was leaving before the bowl game. You know what I mean? Like he promised the the uh, city of Cincinnati a lot more as well. But again, because of the business decision, he decided to go and leave. But where's all the attention with Luke Fickle? It's down in Cincinnati, but it ain't getting nationwide attention. You know what I'm saying? Uh, same thing for Brian Kelly when he left Notre Dame to go to uh, LSU. He didn't stay for the bowl game. Mark, the current coach now, Mark, he had to end up coaching the bowl game. He did the same thing. He coached us. It, it's just a business. So, Prime did the right thing. 
his car got broken into, his son's car got broken into. You know, yes, yeah, a lot of good attention, but there's some bad attention coming with that as well. You down there still somewhere in the hood, people down there are hungry. They see you shiny eating close by, they want some of that too. Now you with somebody who's giving you more support, and you know, bro, listen, this portal is going crazy in college. So probably about to build a dynasty, bro. There's about to be a new Ohio State. There's about to be a new Alabama. All the top dogs going to Wisconsin. So did Prime do the right thing? Absolutely. It's a, it's a business decision. Any other coach would have done it. He just quadrupled his salary. He just bettered his life, got way better support system. They're for the players. They're for the, you know what I'm saying, their, their team. Prime is about to clean Wisconsin up, and it's about to be a whole new, just dynamical football. Football is about to change solely because of Prime himself. Man, he ain't just quadruple. He ain't just quadruple. Prime went from 300K to 5 million. Question. What college wanted Prime in the beginning? Not a single, None. not a single division college wanted to have give Prime a chance to coach. He had to get his foot in the door. Oh, so now because he's successful, y'all want him to stay there. If Prime would have had some losing seasons, would people be this high rate? Would this? Would people Absolutely be not. They they would have they would have been on his ass some terrible if he'd have been losing you know that exactly on top of that prime opened the door for a lot of other NFL uh, alumni to come and do what he did absolutely why ain't nobody on their ass why ain't absolutely. nobody on, why ain't nobody on, on on half of the NFL Hall of Fame's ass for trying to come down to the collegiate level and, and help these boys make it make something out of themselves. Whether it be going pro or just being a a, a, a stand up professional man, nobody's doing any of that. It's it's crucified a black man that's actually in power and trying to help people, and, and for what? Where that's that's what I, that's what I see, Serge. When are we going to just? Start getting behind each other, even even uh, often state with an extreme bias for one another. So whether or not whether or not Prime went in and promised this and did that, like Mike said, w- what he set out to do, who's to say that he didn't and did not uh, accomplish that? Who's he did change the culture? He did it very fast. Stop hating on the man, and just because. What his idea of success don't look like what we wanted it to be, that don't mean that he's wrong. Not wrong at all, man. And that's the thing, like people people fail to realize how much influence Prime got right now in the collegiate level. Like that man is turning the, the collegiate portal right now upside down. People that was gonna leave Colorado is now retracting their statements they want to stay people all the all the d1 recruits now have colorado as a top three uh destination to go to this is all because of Dion sanders if if you're a d-back trying to make it to the nfl wouldn't you want to get coached by the best d-back that was in the nfl People don't think. On top of that, he now has more money to recruit. You don't think more black athletes are going to get an opportunity and a chance? Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's and that's what I'm saying. the The short time he was there, he I he definitely changed the culture. What was it? I don't. And here we go. People did not support that. It's my understanding that that kind of that caliber of football was kind comp- of. Uh, I can't speak, was comparable to D2 football when I played that cow. And people don't watch that that caliber of football. That's just what it is. He was only going to get so far there. We, we can't ignore that. But nonetheless, he had undefeated season for people while there we go. He was blowing folks out. He, he did he did great. He moving on. Cheer that man on. Be done with it. But and okay, if so, people did want to make the argument that oh, he he didn't fulfill a quote unquote promise, 
leave it at that. But to crucify him and say, oh, he's so bad, he's for the money. And it, no, 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 no. It don't work like that. Too many broke motherfuckers got too much to say about rich people's endeavors. And that that's just madness to me. And, and to look at it from this perspective, black people don't understand how much they've gained. See, and not saying that Colorado uh, University didn't recruit black people. Not saying that. So before somebody tries to, no, we're going we gonna to nip that right in the butt. However, JSU is going to continue recruiting mainly black people. Whether Deion Sanders is there or not, Colorado University is about to get a spike in its, in its African-American enrollment because Deion Sanders is there. Black people. JSU is going to be filled with African Americans no matter what. Colorado University isn't. Y'all got to think. But I'm out, man. I got to go back to work. All right, tell you what, y'all, man. Yeah, tell you what, yeah, uh, Gavin, Gavin uh, had to roll out, but yeah, we're going to we're going to end this broadcast here. And uh yeah, that's pretty much it. But yeah, thanks for stopping by Big Nasty. Definitely appreciate it. And uh we're gonna um probably record what's today. Today is Friday, probably gonna jump back into it uh Monday, do our morning show and uh get back into it. Got some more topics on so always uh as always get into our single by choices and uh and just uh keep uh making this thing evolve here. But thanks for stopping by. But yeah, that's that's pretty- for the night, tell you, oh, he's tired, bro. <laughs> working, working all week. <laughs> I see, I see. Get that right. money, bro. Keep yeah, doing like it, my you, brother. We appreciate you, Darnell. Appreciate you, brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Appreciate you guys. Always a uh, blessing to be on. I'll get with y'all soon. Yes, sir. Like you said, anybody at home watching, don't forget, be generous. Hit the like button, share. Subscribe, hit the cash app. The cash app is pinned in the description. Hit the cash app. Support your interest from the horse's mouth. All right. Hit the cash app. Hit the like button. Hit the share button. Hit the subscribe button. Tell your friends. All right. We're trying to get to a thousand subscribers here. We close. Hit the subscribe button, man. Don't be shy. It's free. You go. Don't cost nothing. It's pretty much effortless. You know what I mean? No blood. No blood required. That's it. So like I said, everybody here, we appreciate y'all for tuning in. Uh, Free Brittany Grider. She home. You know, the Merchant of Death. Coach Prime, congratulations. Stop hating. Get that hate out your (laughs) blood. Come on, man. man. That's what it all... That's what it that's how we see it, y'all. All hate. Stop the hate. And like I said, like that. Until next time, we may be back Monday morning. If so, tune in. Hit the notification button. You will always be notified when we go live, drop videos, hit the subscribe button. Go. Until next time, Willie Walker Gavin next out. Y'all enjoy y'all weekend. Adios.